year, Super Value will donate 2.6 million euro and 55,000 footballs to GAA clubs. Super Value, proud sponsors of the Senior Football Championship. It is exactly 100 years ago since the four in a row in football was first achieved, 1915 to 1918, by Wexford. In actual fact, this trophy wasn't the trophy back in those days. There is only one other county in this exclusive club, and that is Kerry. But by five o'clock this evening, Dublin will be hoping to have joined them. From a player's point of view, it's, it's the ultimate accolade. You get over that lane with a bunch of friends you had for life. It's a, a massive, massive achievement. To win that medal, it just meant it meant everything. I think everyone knows it's it's everything to get the Celtic cross. to win the All-Ireland, Cluxton, he's put it over the bar, Dublin have won the All-Ireland, absolutely sensational performance by Tyrone, goal, another one for Dublin, Tyrone are the All-Ireland football champions for 2008, and Dublin are again the champions, the three in a row. We have three all in a row, and now they're looking for the fourth, so they're one step away from um, achieving that goal. They're the ultimate team, the ultimate fitness and ultimate skills. To perform at a high level over and over, year on year, is, is just a testament to the team. I think this, this Dublin team um, is, 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 is going into the territory of being unrivaled. There's only three teams that have done it in the history of the sport. Dublin are trying to emulate that. Time. They know that Tyrone stand in their, their opportunity to win in All-Ireland. It's the one game you want to test yourself in, and it's the one game you're judged on. If anybody can do it, it's this Tyrone team. Because Tyrone are going to come with that hunger, Dublin are going to have to face that hunger head on. We hope with the right performance, Sam could be coming back north. I think they're thinking of just the next one, the next match, and this is the next match. Most Dub fans can avail of public transport to get to Croke Park. Indeed, even make that journey on foot. Their rivals have converged on the capital by whatever means necessary. But they're all here this afternoon for one specific reason. To see something special achieved by their county. It has taken four months and 66 championship matches to get us to this point. But now, can Dublin win their 28th senior title or can Tyrone land just their fourth? The throw-in is at 3.30. Thank you for joining us here at Croke Park on this special day and joining me here in studio. Who else but Colm O'Rourke and Pat Spillane. And we are, of course, lads, missing one for the moment, your <laughs> colleague. <laughs> so this is your opportunity to talk, lads, for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Maybe somebody would kidnap him on the way up again. <laughs> Joe, of course, is down uh, pitch side because the Derry team are the Jubilee team here today, so we'll be seeing him shortly. Looking forward to this match, Colm? Uh, absolutely. Like, uh, I, I haven't experienced an All-Ireland final with less hype and I think the build-up has been quieter. I don't know whether it's because the fact that the, the championship has been poor in comparison with the hurling which has really overshadowed everything mm -hmm. or maybe the fact that it's a lot earlier and there's yeah. not as many emigrants in but there cer certainly isn't the build-up or atmosphere that you normally expect 
Maybe it's the fact that people expect Dublin to win easily. So it's quite low key. But for all of that, like All Ireland Final Day is the centrepiece of Irish sporting tradition, a, a, a big part of what we are about as a people. And, you know, I hope that we get a contest that uh, lives up to, to the day. Well, this is it, because, I mean, the thing about it is, Pat Collum is right in everything he says about this, but today is a big day, and something significant will happen. Either the Dubs will do that four in a row, or Tyrone will win four All-Irelands in 15 years. Yeah, well, I concur with all what Collum has to say. Certainly, in all my years, uh, I can never remember less of a build-up to an mm. All-Ireland final. Normally, an All-Ireland final ends in a huge crescendo. And, and we're sort of been stumbling and stuttering to the end of the line in this. And, and maybe it's because a lot of very predictable matches, a lot of very poor quality football. But at the end of the day, it's an All-Ireland final. And, it, and, and an All-Ireland final is a special occasion. Only two teams can reach it. Dublin going for something historic. Uh, they could be one of the greatest. They could be the greatest Gaelic football team of all time. And Tyrone, look, we know they've been building momentum through the qualifiers. We know at their helm they have Mickey Hart, one of the most astute managers that every, ever coached. So, look, I'm hoping for a contest. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that Tyrone come into this game, not with the one-dimensional game plan, defensive game plan, but that Tyrone come into the game and say, we're going to give it a lash. Uh, and think of the last 15 minutes up in Oma, where they flooded bodies forward, they put pressure on Cluxton's kick-out, and they took Dublin on. So... You know, you, you, have to, you have to come off the field and say, I gave it my yeah, all and yeah, I, really, I really try to win the game. So, please God, we'll have a good contest. Please God, we'll be talking about a good match. Well, I tell you what, today is the day to do it, isn't it? Now, uh, in actual fact, we've already had the All-Ireland Minor Final here at Croke Park today. That was between Kerry and Galway. Kerry winning the title for a fifth successive year. That on a scoreline of 21 points to one goal and 14 points. And in actual fact, two Kilcoman men, Paul O'Shea and Keith O'Leary, lifting the Tom Markham Cup. But that's a special day, obviously, for your minors down there. It is, and a very special achievement because it's the first ever team in either football or hurling that have completed five All-Irelands in yes. a row. The last time this team were defeated was in August 2013. So four minors followed by an under-17. And what makes this under-17 achievement even more remarkable is that normally with a minor team, you'll always have uh, six or seven from the previous year to build on. With an under-17 team, they had to start from scratch, started yes, the new panel yeah. back in August and built again. So it's an amazing achievement. Mm. But can I say one thing about it? I mean, while the, while the Senior Football Championship has been disappointing this year, no doubt about it, the under-17 Championship has been absolutely yes, has. brilliant. And two things about Kerry. One, they showed great spirit. Against, against Monaghan in the semi-final, a man down, pint down, came back to win it. Today, seven pints down in the middle of the yeah, first half, yeah. being outplayed by Galway and came back to win it. Great spirit, great determination. But I will say this, today's final that we just saw there, traditional Gaelic football at its best. Beautiful attacking play, beautiful kick passing, some wonderful pints. So if Gaelic football is played in the right manner and coached in the right manner and played with the innocence that the youth brought today, it can be a great game to watch, Michael, and today was enjoyable. You're starting to dream now, okay, Pat. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Tyrone's three All-Ireland title successes, as I said a moment ago, they've all come in the past 15 years. But the journey began a few years before that. 1998 was a particularly troubled year in the county. But a talented Tyrone minor team at least gave people the odd moment of respite. I guess, uh... You want to win the All Ireland. The people on the outside, supporters, maybe thinking, look, it's good to get on an All Ireland final. If we get three or four lads out of this team, it'd be great. But as it turned out, you know, it, it was a it was a freak team at that time. We we got something like ten or eleven boys that went on and under twenty ones and, and senior medals at that time. And you know, I don't think it'll it'll ever happen again that a team will come and, and carry that many through. Myself, I went to school for Cormac for six or seven years as well and was unaware that he was speaking Irish so when he got up and he started to speak the whole speech in Irish it was, it was surprising for me but the GA in Irish culture was always very very important to him and he's seen this as I suppose as a, his role to do nearly in a way that he was captain he had to make a statement where he could follow the Irish language by standing up as an 18-year-old and 
and making a speech in front of whatever it was, 70 odd thousand people there that day. It had all started out so well for the Tyrone minor team in their Ulster Championship match against Armagh. Star forward Paul McGurr slotted over a fine long range point early on. Tragedy sort of has followed a lot of Tyrone teams and it's probably, it was the death of Paul in 97 certainly probably motivated a lot of players from that stage onwards and it developed into, into senior football but certainly that was something that Mickey was very careful I think that year from talking to the players not to talk about winning the line for Paul McGuire it was important probably not to put that sort of pressure on people at 17, 18 years of age but you got a sense that the players had been there the season before there was there was more than a motivation of just winning Fair County and, and winning the Ireland title it was it was deeper than that. We were preparing for an all Ireland semi-final I think it was at that time and we were, I'd say we were no more than uh, 15 miles from, from when the bomb actually happened. From memory, we had, I think we had a train session that morning, we had a team building day in St Kieran's Bally Holly School and the news come and Mickey says, look, we need to cut things here, we need to head home, there's been a tragedy in Oman. We had to grow up very quickly, but Mickey was our leading light at that time, Mickey was our father-like figure and, and you would never think that the man had, had so many devastations in his life that he, he, he just dealt with in such a manner that we felt at ease and you know we have to be grateful for, for Mickey carrying us through those, those bad times. We had a, a large semi-final against Leitrim shortly after. That was probably the best thing. We had football to focus on and, and to try and I suppose give everybody within Tyrone something to, to look forward to and, and I suppose that can only be seen as a good thing that we could help people away from to get through personal tragedies and to help them look forward towards the future. Probably been something, a deeper bond probably between those players probably from, from an early age. Obviously Paul McGuire's death with the 97 team and rolling through into the 98s. I made so many friends, so many friends off, off, the, off the field from it. And you know, I, I can look at, at those boys that I played with in the 97, 98 minor teams and, and under 21 seniors after. You just have something special when you shake hands with them or you look on the eye, you know that you went to the trenches with them. Behind it all, there was a lot, a lot of tragedies, but you, know, you only have to look at Paul McGuire and Cormac McAnallan. We will grow old and, and we will die probably old men, but the one special thing about those two boys is that we will always, always remember them as young, young lads playing football and they, they died young. We'll always remember them as that, or we'll maybe be remembered as old people just die. Yeah, my good mate from the rallying world, Willie Joel Dolan, of course, was the sponsor back in the day of that team. This journey for the last 20 years of Tyrone football, Colin, it has been truly remarkable, you'd have to say. Whatever happens today. Yes, whatever happens. And, of course, the Naughties team that won three All-Irelands had some of the greatest talents that we ever had, like Peter Canavan and uh, Stephen O'Neill and Owen Mulligan and Sean Kavanagh and Brian McGuigan. Like, these were special players. But there's a common thread running through it, I suppose, was with Mickey Hart. Mm, and during that voyage over the last 20 years, there's been one of triumph and tragedy. And there's been a lot of dark days for a lot of people in Tyrone. And I think football has been a wonderful uh, bolstering effect to hold them all together yes, through has. very, very dark times. And they have repaid the sort of faith that the supporters have in them by coming to Crow Park on a regular basis and beating Kerry in All-Ireland mm -hmm. Finals and beating the best of teams. So uh, if we all are a product of our environment, I suppose some of the harsh days of Tyrone have oh, been reflected yeah. in a flowing football that they have brought to Crow Park, but they're also reflects in a hardness of mentality, which means that they won't yield to anyone. I suppose you have to have that, don't you? Absolutely. Look. You know, I, I will always be labelled for that puke football remark I made about yes. Tyrone yeah. back in 2003. It's a remark that I said once and once ever. And, and I probably regret it because I, I do regret it because it took from the achievements for a while mm, of this mm. Tyrone team. Uh, because this Tyrone team, as, when Cullum was listing out all those players, some of those players, the Peter Canavans, the Sean Cavanaghs, the Stephen O'Neills, Brian Dewars, they were some of the greatest players yes, to ever play. Yeah. Tyrone in, in 05 and 08 played some of the best football any county has ever done, sure. down through the history. So they're, they're brilliant footballers. They're, you know, they're an amazing county. You know, they're an ama like, we come from a different environment yeah, down south. Yeah. We don't realise the hardship they went through up north to keep the GA alive, to play GA. And, 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 we, and counties like Armagh, obviously, and as well. And, so and we don't yes. understand it. And, and to them, football is more than just a sport. It's an identity, it's a badge, which to us down in Kerry, we don't quite grasp at times. But you just have to admire the resilience. You just have to admire just the way they come back from disappointment, from mm. some of the mm. worst 
the losing Paul McGill, losing yes, Cormac yeah. McAnallen, yeah. and Mickey Hart at the helm. And like you, you know, he divides up in it sometimes. But he's one of the greatest, greatest managers that have ever graced mm -hmm. the game. So look, Tyrone. The only thing that's infuriated me about Tyrone is that they have brilliant footballers. This team have lovely, skillful footballers. And sometimes you say. Ah, let's give us, let's play what you're capable of playing instead of being hamstrung to a defensive game plan that is not going to win. Well, if, the you, game. if you made a comment about the Puke football, I certainly you regret did. the comment I made about Brian Dewar where I'd eat my hat if they won All Ireland. Yeah, yeah. He, he really so shoved that one down my throat. So we're taking, our, we're taking back all the bad things we've said about Tyrone. <laughs> I may, I may I've noticed that. I may have yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until maybe that. five o'clock we could reconsider. Now, that's uh, just a few minutes ago here at Croke Park. This year's Jubilee team were honoured. Derry were of course all Ireland winners back in 1993 and what an unforgettable occasion for the men from the Oak Leaf County, their county's first all Ireland success and there were, we remember joyous scenes as Henry Downey lifted that Sam Maguire Cup. They're the all hour and of course our own Joe Brawley is down there amongst them and uh, blowing kisses as well lads to the crowd and the only thing I would comment about on that when he was up here in studio earlier on he gave me a kiss. And that's far more worrying, I can tell you, than all this stuff. <laughs> uh, they were actually, Michael, they were a brilliant team. They yes, were they an were. absolutely brilliant team. McGilligan, mm. uh, the Downies. Uh, Joe could have been even an even better player, but I always felt with Joe as a player that perhaps he lacked a bit of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> no courage. Well, oh, what's his courage? Sorry, sorry. He made up for it since. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's head outside for the moment. Marty Morrissey is on Jones's Road, so let's see who he has got with them. Well, it's a beautiful day, temperature degrees about 24, and the excitement building up here on Jones's Road for this season's All Ireland Football Final. I'm joined by two men that uh, certainly uh, brought the championship alive Conor McManus of Monaghan, Damien Comer of Galway. I know it's a probably a double-edged sword. In some ways, I'm sure you're delighted to be here, but heartbroken is not your own county. Yeah, Marty, yeah. Uh, obviously, we'd, we'd, we'd love to be getting ready for, for action now at half three. Uh, disappointing week coming into the game, obviously, but look, you just have to move on and, 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 and put it behind you. Um, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, conditions are going to make it just that wee bit tougher on players there. It is warm. It, it is quite warm, yeah, so it should be, should be a good game. What do you think, uh, Damien, Dublin or Tyrone? I was I was woke up this morning and said if there was a bit of rain rain out there that I give I give Tyrone a slight chance but uh, I can't see I can't see anything anything can beat in Dublin they're a phenomenal side and I I'd say Dublin Dublin will take it. You know what they're like because you played against them and I'm sure you're heartbroken as well that you're not playing here today. Ah uh, yeah look at you you can't really dwell on it it's obviously disappointing but um oh, I think like Tyrone will give them enough of it for for 50 60 minutes of the game but it's it's the last 10 where Dublin have that firepower to come on off the bench and they just they they, they kill teams off in that period and Tyrone will be hurting from the semi final last year so if they can bring that hurt and turn it into a positive going out there today they they'll run them close but I just I can't see I can't see Dublin being beat what have Tyrone got to do to win this, though, Connor? Yeah, uh, first thing I suppose, Marty, is they have to they have to be in the game. You know, they have to they have to keep it tight at the start. I think if you look back to the semi-final last year, after 20 minutes the game was over. So, Tyrone Tyrone's big thing is, is get a good start and, and make sure the game is is there thereabouts. Come, you know, 50, 55 minutes and and, and see where it goes from there. Well, Damien Comer and Conor McManus, thank you both very much, and indeed to Galway and Monaghan for all their cooperation all year. The question is on Jones's Road: Will it be Tyrone? Yeah! Or will it be Dublin? Dublin. Time will tell. Back to you. It will, of course, Marty. You know what? There has been just the one previous meeting featuring Dublin and Tyrone in an All-Ireland final. That was in 1995. However, there have been some memorable clashes between them down through the years. And a 
It's becoming an impossibility to referee. Oh, these are crazy scenes now at the start of the new National League. Kavanagh goes. May go with the fist here to really go for goal. Kavanagh! What a start for Tyrone! Nicky Hart has come up with a tactical masterclass. Dante Ogara, he's kicked another one! And Dublin's eliminate Tyrone from the championship. For Conor Callan, back in the end of the game. Conor Callan, true goal! What a strike! better when you've all the facts. You're welcome back again, of course, to Croke Park on All Ireland Final Day. And right now here on the programme, let's hear from the Dublin manager, Jim Gavin. We sat down with him recently to get his thoughts on the challenge ahead. Dublin are again the champions, the three in a row. I think really we're one of, witnessing one of the greatest teams in GA history. They'll go for their four in a row next year and their five in the year after. But I think Jim Gavin has really amassed a special group, group of players. We're just privileged to be back in a, in a, in a, in a final. I suppose the you know, supporters will, will, will no, no doubt discuss it. Um, but the guys and the team are very present and they're just trying to do their best in a, in a, in a, in a game against a magnificent Toronto team. These are crazy scenes now at the start of the new National League. I think what's happened in the past, between, in the games in the past, it's, it's very, from the Dublin perspective, it's, it's very much in the past. We've never traded off it, we've never referenced it. Um, uh, recent games will, will, will certainly drive our attention. We have two great games this year, Bonoma against Tyrone, back in the league in February. And again, in the, in the second game of the, uh, the quarterfinal, uh, Ron Robin series, we had, we had a, a fantastic battle against Tyrone. Fantastic defences they always have had, but um, probably their, 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 their attacking progress probably doesn't get enough airtime. You know, of the 10 championship games that they've played, 17 goals, over 160 points. So when you have that in your armoury, um, that probably shows you how, how potent they can be. The football that we play is just a reflection of, of what's played at, at, um, at Dublin Club and at, say, even coming to Munskull. It is based on an attacking, an honest, open attacking uh, game plan. Um, but obviously the game, the modern game has changed, so defence has become very much part of, of, of a coach's remit, so we look after that heavily as well. But yeah, our core philosophy will be attack-based where we can. Um, sometimes that's not possible, but teams get, get a lot of players behind the ball, so we need to try and figure that out and, and have different strategies to try and get scores on the board. We always see those, those pre-season competition as, as an opportunity f for, for emerging players to, to stake a claim at the National League squad and if they can do well within the group and are in turn training and, and play well in National League games then they obviously push themselves forward so we're just opening the door to create the opportunity for the player it's up to them to step, step through the door and, and, to, and, to, and to work hard at their game and to be their very best so it's really just about giving players opportunities I don't see it as, as, as hard work it's just it's really enjoyable you know, the enthusiasm that the Dublin players have is, is infectious so you just turn up the training and you just see the energy how bubbly they are and it's just a privilege to, 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 to work with these players and I think at this stage of the season you're very much in their coattails so the players and the leaders in the group are, are driving it forward and, and in some respects the management team are just there to guide them along the way and indeed, our thanks to Jim Gavin for giving us his time during the week. As you can see, Mr. Brolly is here with us. And congratulations, Joe, on the event that we've just seen down yeah. pitch side, which you obviously enjoyed. Although, a little bit of mixed emotions, I suppose, one man missing yeah. from, from the... Well, uh, uh, the strength of my emotions took me by surprise, whereas I didn't think it would feel like that. I know. But to be there again, and the All-Ireland Final, a symbol for GAA, people all over the world. And then, obviously, we felt very keenly the loss of Eamon mm. Coleman, who was great fun and a, our spiritual sort of leader, yes, and source yeah. of fun and all of that. But we were delighted that his daughter, Margaret, was there today. She's yeah. travelled over from the north of London and she stood in his stead. And, uh, you know, she was making the point earlier that 
she loves to get home as often as possible because although the north of England's grand, yeah. there's no sense of community. She comes back yeah. here, she's immersed in the community immediately. Yeah. So it was a beautiful day and we're very grateful for that. Yeah, well I'm glad you enjoyed it and well done again to all you guys. Pat, let's talk about this present Dublin team. That was a famous team. This is a famous team and it's going to get more famous if they win this All-Ireland. But I suppose we, what we also have to put into the mix here, like any team, like your own team back in the day, it's not the same team kind of that just goes year to well, year. Well, it's interesting with talk of Dublin possibly winning four in a row now and a lot of comparisons between the Kelly four in a row team. And, but you know, it's very interesting, the Kelly four in a row team that won 78 to 81, the team that won the four in a row in 81 had only one change from the team that started in 78 and that one change was an enforced change due to injury. Whereas the Dublin team, who are now going for four in a row, the difference since their first one, there are six players gone. Four forwards are gone. Bernard Brogan, Diarmuid Connolly, Paddy Andrews, Paul Flynn, uh, Dennis Bastic is gone and Rory O'Connell gone. Six gone. And that's the thing about it is what it highlights is that Gavin is not afraid to wield the axe, he's not afraid to mm -hmm. freshen things up. Last year he brought in Niall Scully and Con O'Callan, and this year he's brought in Owen Merchant and Brian Howard, and they have freshened them up, and they've been a revelation. Merchant is small, he's pacey, he's a tenacious, tight knocking yes. defender. Brought, getting his championship debut against Donegal with one, with one job to follow man Mark, Mark McHugh, and you can see. Despite where the ball is, his sole, his sole focus was Mac and Mac McHugh. Right. Pressure on Ryan McHugh, forcing Ryan onto the left foot a wide against, against Tyrone. Another man marking job, this time on Niall Sludden. Very effective, Sludden is forced to overcarry the ball. Sludden was held scoreless and replaced. A brilliant man marker. But Brian Howard has been a revelation. He has everything, an mm. all round football. Watch this for fielding. Over the heads of Brian Fint and Michael Murphy. Lovely feet jinking runner. This is unique to him, the way he spins in and rolls out of a tackle. He was brilliant in this game against Donegal. He, he was only on for 50 minutes. He had 35 possessions. He kicked the point with the right. He kicked the point with the left. And this is Dublin at their best, stretching the play. But watch where Brian Howard is. He identifies the space. And you see him at his best. The ball, the Galway defence is brought over. A, sw a switch onto Brian Howard. Look, lo lovely footwork, lovely jinking runner. Identifies the space and takes the point. Look, Brian Howard, he can play halfback, he can play centre field, he can play in the forwards. He's a nailed on certainty already for an all star. He's probably also going to be the young footballer of the year. So, this is what Jim Gavin has done. It's not resting on your laurels, it's freshening things up, new tactics, new players, and certainly Merchant and, and Howard have been a revelation. And nailed on certainty for an all star, he says, so that's one of our jobs taken care of already right. at this time of the year. Now, at this point here on the programme, time for us to head down pitch side. Joanne Cantwell is there to get some views from the rival camps. Joanne. Yeah, well, it's just over, a little over 12 months since Sean Kavanagh was on the throne team, who was left shell-shocked by Dublin in an All-Ireland semi-final. Kieran Whelan remembers the days when the dubs were the underdogs going into a meeting these two counties. So, Sean, straight away, how much better is this throne team, if at all, than they were in that All-Ireland semi-final? They'll be much better prepared, Joanne, there's no doubt in that. We weren't expecting that level of a performance from Dublin last, last year. But Why not, though? We thought our system was unbreakable. I, I think what we learned that day and, and what Tyrone have learned from the games against Dublin earlier this season is you cannot play like that against Dublin. Um, that was arrogance on, on our behalf. But the, the Tyrone players have, have a great sense of being able to stop teams whenever they whenever they work out their strengths. I think we know now what Dublin will do today. I think Tyrone know we're going to have to go man to man at times. We're going to have to take risks. Everyone everyone in Tyrone wants this Tyrone team now to come down and have a go at Dublin. And you know what? If we walk away here today losing by 10 points, having a go, I, th I, th I think everyone will be happy going up the road. But if they do have a go, I have the sneaky suspicion there's enough character in this Tyrone team to possibly get over the line today. Does, does that surprise you to hear? We see the Throne players coming out there and Sean's not the first person to say this Throne team will have no fears. That's despite the fact that they were shell-shocked was the word I used. They were left shell-shocked by the Dublin. Yeah, Island. well, I, I think, Joanne, if, if we get a 10-point victory today, I'd be very, very happy going back, back up the road. Uh, listen, I think, as Sean said, it didn't work for them last year, so they have to try something different. So it's a real game of risk and reward. You know, it's going to be very, very difficult for Tyrone to push out on Dublin. Dublin have so much power in that middle of the park. And if they do, can they do it for 70 minutes? Will they leave too many chances inside for Dublin? And I think that's where Dublin have to be ready, that if Tyrone adapt their game plan, that Dublin switch it up a bit and get ball quicker into the 
forward line and try hurt them. So, listen, it's a huge task. Dublin have the experience being here the last three years. It's the first All-Ireland for a lot of these guys. Big day from Tyrone. The first 10, 15 minutes is going to be crucial that they kind of stay in this game, they settle into the game and they become comfortable. I think that, I think Tyrone, Joan, has, has to bring this game into an emotional battle. In, in, in the 3 final coming here, and, and we weren't at our best, but everything was pure emotion. It was our mad, it was the rivalry. This is a new team. There's 14 new players are going to start an All-Ireland final here today for Tyrone. But if they can pull Jim Gavin out of his systems approach and, and, and maybe throw a couple of surprises tactically, maybe throw Pity Hard inside where John Small can't touch him and, and, and go at this with an emotional outlook, a bit like Limerick in the hurl, I think we could have a shock. But I think the key thing is controlling that emotion as well and being composed. This Dublin team is very, very comfortable. Yes, you, you expect a sense of fiery battle from Tyrone. They have to maybe drag the game down a little bit in the first 10 minutes, try and unsettle Dublin. But at the same time, they're going to have to have other that Other teams composure. have tried that in the past. Yeah, well, it, 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 has, it hasn't worked. But listen, Tyrone have come here in All-Ireland final days before and ambush team. So that's what they have to do. They have to try and stay in this game as long as possible. Well, there is a lot, an awful lot of uh, comparisons to an ambush back in 2008 when you, uh, on, Sean, and the Tyrone team were the big underdogs against Kerry. But is it a fair comparison? Do Tyrone have the same or anything close to the same quality of players in their squads? I think the uncertainty with me is, is whether we have enough up front. I think we have enough at the back. I would trust the Tyrone guys to go man on man with Dublin. And, and, and I hope I'm trying to coax Colm all week to go out and, and play a bit more in the centre of the field. Does he listen to you more than he listens to me? He definitely doesn't listen to me, but I, I, I've, been, I've been whispering in his ear and, and I would love to see him to go out and impose himself around the midfield. Don't leave Brian Fenton free. Brian Fenton, in my opinion, is probably the best player in Ireland at the moment. Him and Keir Kilkenny, 50-50. I think Colm has to impose himself on him physically, which he can do. And if he does that there, and, and you know what, I think Tyrone are going to have to rely on someone coming up with something different today. Maybe a Conor McAlisky scoring four or five points from play. It's possible. It's a it's a hope as much of an expectation. But if they do that and someone can catch fire in the forward unit, it could be Tronsley. Yes, I know. Are you tipping them to win? No comment. It's hard, it's hard as hard as, as our rule in the head. Yeah, it's I'm not even, going to, me. not even going to bother asking you for your predictions. The good news is the sun is absolutely shining here. Now, there are quite a few Tyrone infiltrators in the hill as well, but there is an absolute perfect setting for an All-Ireland final. It is, Joanne. It is very warm. And I noticed that on Hill 16. I have to say, it doesn't matter what county you're from, the scene on Hill 16 when the dubs are playing is something special. Sean, obviously talking about Tyrone there. Joe, you want to talk about Tyrone and you want to talk about what you say is a, a lack of attacking chemistry. Is that Well, it, they, last year, after the humiliation against the dubs, they should have then said, look, we've got to go man to man. We can use Collie Cavan as the sweeper, use the Dublin template, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. They dawdled along. Yeah. What happened was they eventually went man to man against Monaghan to deal with all the tactical problems created by not going man to man. But what we saw that day was they were a team unused to playing attacking football together. And that alchemy, that chemistry that is required for a great forward line, you know, as any of the boys will tell you here, it takes a while. It doesn't take months, it takes a year or two at the very yes. least. And we saw then against Monaghan, in the first half alone, six balls into the keeper's hands, seven wides. And in the second half, that problem continued. They got a lucky goal in the end to rescue them. But this is an example. 72 and a half minutes, there's 30 seconds left on the clock. Now the Dubs would have just tucked away possession. Tyrone a point up. He kicks the ball away again into the keeper's hands. There's no thought put into it, there's no composure. Monaghan could easily have gotten the equaliser. Mm. And that's the problem. Mayo have come up against Dublin, they've gone man to man, they've been brilliant. Because they've been playing attacking football for six years. Yeah, yeah. Tyrone, I think it's come too soon. What they want to do today is go out and play with honour and pride and go for the game, just as Sean suggests. Mm. Because no matter what else happens, I believe that this will be a launch pad for a Tyrone team that could become a great team. All right. you know, so the thing is to go out, make yeah. it unpredictable, go after them. Because the dubs will cough up chances for them if they do that. All right, let's see how it all works out. And right now, though, it is uh, time for us to get updates. On the team lineouts in the commentary box this afternoon, Jar Canning and Desi Dolan. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. The word we are getting from Dublin in the last couple of minutes is that they will be unchanged. I might have the words, at least for now, but there are two changes for Tyrone. And the changes there involve Rory Brennan coming in and Connor Myler coming in as well. Alongside me, I've got Desi, as you mentioned. Those two changes, I was anticipating that Connor Myler might come in if fit at all. Yeah, look at Tyrone in the 0 3, 0 5, and 0 8 final were underdogs. Mickey Hart did something them days to surprise the opposition. Today, he's changed the team. He probably needs to do something drastic. 
under Jim Gavin they've played 38 games they've only lost one so Mickey Hart is pulling a rabbit out of a hat will it be good enough? In fact in the 2008 final the last final that they played here he also made two changes just before the start let's take a check on the teams then and we'll start with Dublin and one man who's uh, seen it all and of course he's done it all as well that's Stephen Cluxton it's his seventh time facing Tyrone in the championship Named in his full back line today are Philly McMahon playing in his 50th championship match and Owen Merchant playing in his first All-Ireland final. The semi-final victory over Galway showed how former footballer of the year Jack McCaffrey was back to his best. Injury cut short his participation in last year's decider. Lining up at centre field today for Dublin will be Brian Fenton from Rohini and James McCarthy who was brilliantly effective in the 2017 decider. The youthful half-forward line shows Connell Callaghan flanked by Niall Scully, who came on as a sub last year, and Brian Howard, for whom this is his first All-Ireland. And just ahead of them, well, there's some number changes for Kieran Kilkenny, Paul Mannion, who's been prolific, and top scorer, of course, Dean Rock. Well, plenty there to keep Niall Morgan on his toes. He's been sharing the goalkeeping duties this year with Mickey O'Neill. The full back line has been well marshalled all summer long by UUJ student Ronan McNamee, forced off in Oma through injury the last time these sides met. He plays behind a half back line where Tiernan McCann and Peter Hart will be expected to show the usual high work rate, which, as you've just heard, Rory Brennan coming in to replace Frank Burns. Well, Colum Cabana, as per usual, will be in the middle of the field or so, but of course he tends to play sweeper, and alongside him will be Cahal McShane, possibly likely to play a little further forward. The captain, Matty Donnelly, starts at half forward with Kieran McGeary on the opposite wing and the crafty Niall Studden in his 20th championship match, prompting from number 11. And in the inside forward line, much will depend on the success rate of Conor McAlisky. He missed last year's championship because of injury. And, of course, there's a start for Conor Myler as well in place of Richie Donnelly. Well, both managers have unblemished All-Ireland final records. Mickey Hart of Tyrone hoping to make it a fourth Sam Maguire win with Jim Gavin seeking to add another, another title victory to the four that he's already overseen. All about to be revealed, Michael, in the next few minutes. It most certainly is. I suppose the thing about teams these days, Ger was giving you the changes there. These are these are panels that we use today in the matches. But but even having said that, Colin Burke, you can only put 15 players out in the field. So it's also down to the subs you can bring on and make the impact. Yes, but some teams now are picking a team to finish the game as well as start the game. And I think it was apparent uh, after the match versus Donegal that Tyrone then decided that they needed. In this game, you see Harry Loughran coming on against Dublin and kicking a great point. And it was the first time, I think, that Mickey Hart really trusted his bench, or maybe it was a position that he had to. Against Donegal, Tyrone were in trouble, and Lee Brennan and Kieran McGeary came on to that game and made a big difference. They came on, they had to win the match for Donegal, and we can see great points from both Brennan and McGeary. And then in the end of the game, Beckham McClure, well, it was really over at this stage but he came on they were all subs scoring at the end but in that game Tyrone subs changed the course of the game against Donegal we're used to seeing Dublin subs coming on and it's merely mopping up operations Paul Flynn Kevin McManaman and Cormac Costello and they always just come on to add a bit of gloss see Costello here how quick he gets the ball down to his foot and over the bar and what Tyrone need to do in this particular game is they need to put the Dublin side under pressure that the Dublin subs have to come on to win the game rather than just look good and kick easy scores as they did here in this match and that is the test for them to put it to the last 10 minutes the only team that has done it in the last five years of course has been Donegal and Dublin subs came on against Donegal in that second half back in 2014 and weren't able to make an impact because yeah. there wasn't the same amount of room Tyrone need to put Dublin into that zone where there isn't room in the Tyrone backline and those forwards don't have the same impact. Well, I suppose another big impact on Gaelic football in the modern era, Joe, is the kickouts by the goalkeeper and that. And we know Stephen Cluxton's, Cluxton's record here yes. and the template that he has set. So how do how do Tyrone work around well, that? Tyrone have a problem here. Against Monaghan, they went to a flat press, so they went man to man. Now, what that means is that your opponent decides where the ball's going to go. And Rory Began had a field day. Monaghan were generally speaking compressed in the middle. This first kick out that went over the top, it yielded a great goal chance. Um, and Conor McManus botched it. Right. Mm. On four separate occasions during the game, Began hit that identical kick out over the top, over the 45. Now, 
On the other three occasions, like the first, Monaghan botched them. But you imagine Dublin getting these opportunities. I just had a look through the statistics during the week. In the last three games between Dublin and Tyrone, of 16 kickouts kicked over the top, Dublin have manufactured one, one nine. Mm. Now, any of these opportunities are goal chances for Dublin. And so Tyrone must, between the last game today, have recalibrated here. Because if they go man to man and allow Cluxon to dictate where the kickouts are going to go, it will be a disaster because Dublin will convert these chances. Their conversion rate is almost 70%, which is unprecedented in Gaelic football. And that's a brilliant opportunity to get a score on your own kickout if everyone's pressing in and you're deciding where that kickout's going. Could so I just make one They need to have gone to a zonal defence yeah. today yeah. on the kickouts because just, otherwise it'll be serious trouble. I just back up exactly what Joe is, yeah. is saying. If you want to get it right, you want to tell your forwards, don't mark the backs at all, but stay in a zone and the outside player stays outside yeah. the back so that the ball can't be kicked out yeah. wide to the sideline. Now, it's a risky business, but you can do it after a score because the forwards have yes. plenty of time yeah. to organise themselves. But the problem with Luxton is he doesn't give and, yeah, the forwards you'll recall, time, Colin, the time the very, to set up. The very first kick-out that they had against Tyrone last year and what we thought was going to be an epic battle of systems, Cluxton kicked it long over the top to Scully yes. and Tyrone immediately abandoned the press but, after that. But go back to that last 15 minutes in Oma. Maybe Dublin had taken the foot slightly off the pedal but there was certainly a change in attitude definitely mentally and tactically from Tyrone in that last 15 minutes they pressed up and Cluxton kick out Cluxton three of, of the four kick outs he lost in that game also Tyrone kicked six of the last eight scores because they showed conviction you have to gamble. I mean, you're not going totally, to go. Totally. You're not going to go man to man yeah, yeah, yeah. with the dubs for 70 minutes yeah. because it demands huge reserves of fitness. It deserves. It demands huge concentration. But I think today, yes, they'll have to press up. Yes, they'll have to go man to man. But I think they'll have to alternate it. Say, do it for periods, then go back to the zone. Pat, I very, it's, it's very difficult. And I tell you, if you're sending a team out against Dublin and you're saying, right. You know, look, we're going to try and play two or three simultaneous game plans. It's already yeah, confusion yeah. for a team yeah. who are going out there unsure of themselves. Tyrone are not going out there certain of how they're going to play and certain of winning the game the way the dubs are. So I think that what they've got to do is have what Kavanaugh was talking about, the courage of their convictions. Go man to man, let Colin Kavanaugh play as a sweeper. You will get at the dubs that way. It's the only way to do it. Mayo have shown us that every year. Well, I look at, at yeah. the only time that the dubs were beaten in a really serious competitive game over the last 18 months was probably the league final when Kerry beat them. And mm. Kerry had two great performances yeah, against man them. Man. They had a draw against them and they beat them in the league final. And there was two things about it. They went man to man. Yeah, well. They got stuck into them. They got in, in under their skin. But in particular, they targeted three key players within the Dublin setup for special attention. Kieran Kilkenny was man marked, Brian Finton was man marked, and they walked the sweeper Keen or Sullivan. But they went at it, they went at it, and they played on their terms. Yeah, That's but the great players overcome systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course they do, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, Not necessarily, Colin. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't in 2014. Yeah, yeah, Dublin but, couldn't overcome well, yeah, yeah, but at, at, that time, at that time, they've learned Dublin, to overcome it. Dublin were exposed at the back yeah. and they weren't yeah. playing a sweeper. But great players on the field are able to overcome yeah. tactical system. Tactics won't make you a great team. It can benefit you in yeah. the yeah. But yeah. Yes. the problem for Tyrone is they don't look as if they have the individual quality to back up their but tactical system. I suppose Certainly yeah. nothing but, compared to yeah. the team, say, of 10 years ago. Yeah. But the interesting thing about tactics is that how they've evolved with Dub. When Dublin, when Jim Gavin came in with the Dub, they were a swashbuckling, attacking, kicking game, first time ball into the full forward line. And as the seasons have progressed, and particularly this year, I don't know why, but they've become mechanical, they they've become conservative, like and they're going through that doom, you know, that word process. Hold on a second. Whenever you've got a team like Galway or Tyrone, uh, as they have been playing, or Monaghan, and they've got 13 men behind the 45, you can't kick the ball forward. You've got to tailor your cloth accordingly. Absolutely. So this yeah. myth, this uh, myth that oh, Dublin have become a boring team, it's of necessity because of this dull defensive setup that they've had to endure. You watched them last year in the All Ireland final, and they weren't one bit dull playing yeah, man-to-man. Man. We talk about Tyrone and the tactics to to overcome them. Dublin will have plenty of tactics. Okay, they will Ooh. target Matty Donnelly. They will yeah. target Peter, Peter Hart. Hart. They will target Colin Kavanagh. So, like, you know, when it comes to it, Jim Gavin, even though he's the most talented bunch, has also decided that when he comes up against certain opposition, of course. he plays a different type of game. I suppose it's one thing that Martin Carney years ago branded paralysis by analysis. Well, yeah. I, I, I actually, I think, I think that I spoke about that one time because I'll tell you, it, 
paralysis by analysis came. Uh, where did you where did you hear that, Pat? It came from. Are you Clive, saying that was an original? Cl- no, it wasn't. It came from Clive Woodward. Do you accept that? Excuse me. It came from Clive Woodward's approach to England winning the World Cup in 2003. It was paralysis by analysis. It was all about studying the opposition, identifying their key, key players, and coming up with a game plan to counteract it. And the game plan that w- was executed through safety first, conservative, keeping possession, not taking risks, not taking chances, and what. The GA, the GA coaches, particularly in Ulster Force and everywhere else, yeah. and suddenly discovered, yeah, gee, this can really be adopted to, to, to Gaelic but, football. But Gaelic uh, football is I, a game that we can I, I adopt say, a defensive I, I, I system. I say that if Tyrone, the seeds of recovery were there with Tyrone in the Monaghan game. We saw it in the last 20 minutes against Tony Ball. And what happens a lot is when a team has been playing a blanket defensive system for years, everyone loses confidence yes. in playing real football. Mm. And what we saw today in the minor match was a brilliant display of open man to man football. <laughs> and if Tyrone because I always say this, and I believed it then and I believe it now, that we've all got a duty to the game of Gaelic football. In the same way that hurling people feel they've got a duty, we've a duty to the great game of Gaelic football. And if Tyrone come out of this with honour today, yeah. whether they win or lose, I will be absolutely delighted because that will be, that'll light the touch paper for coaches all over Ireland to say, look, there is a better way of playing the game. But I, I have no doubt, lads, and Colm, tell me what you think of this. It's all right saying what Joe said, and that's true enough. But is there any player sitting in a dress room, dressing yeah, room saying to themselves, choice, we, we want to go out and play with honour? Uh, well, um, we I want to go out and win the match. Exactly, the and every club team that are playing in a junior championship final over the next few, few weeks will take winning a very, very poor game yeah. than being part of a brilliant match yeah. which they lose. And that is the very nature of yes. every player. And it's the, going to be the nature of the beast today. So if Dublin have to do whatever it takes to win this game, and if it's an uh, ugly... Yeah. winning performance they will be very happy with that but their natural game in fairness to them mm. is to move the ball fast mm. to kick the ball the mm. Tyrone game is unfortunately they get very it, few it people a, in front of the yeah. ball and they then don't have enough players to kick the ball it's, it's in here tr- last year in this game if you remember they put Mark Bradley up yeah. front on his own the smallest six. player on the team and they had nobody to kick the ball in all right, that's as you can see on your screens there, Uke Doron Heron and Michael G. Higgins is emerging out to meet the teams and receive the pres- presidential salute. Specialta, Amanishtam, E Specialta, Bula, Leshnaforna, Shindor Noi, Uchtaron the Hayden, Behold D O'Higgy, Nagasine, the Glesh Ta, Uchtaron, come on Luke Lascoel, Sean O'Horoin. What a splendid setting it is. Time for the president to meet the team, starting with the defending champions, and their captain, of course, Stephen Claxton, hoping to be the first captain ever in the history of the GAA to take home Sam four years in a row as captain. Going down through it there with Paul Mannion. There's Brian Howard, what a season he's had. Conal Callaghan, the big star of last year. That's Niall Scully, didn't start last year, was in the subs. James McCarthy, Brian Fenton, arguably the finest centre field player in the game. The brilliant Jack McCaffrey. And there's Johnny Cooper from Nafiana, which is the same club, incidentally, that uh, the president of the GAA, John Horan, belongs to. Up as far as uh, Keanu O'Sullivan, there's Philly McMahon. So the uh, president wishing everybody the best. Connor Lane from Bantier Lyre in Cork has the honour of refereeing today's final with uh, David Goff and Paddy Neal in his linesman. Sean Lafferty from Antrim there greeting the president. He's the sideline official. And the umpires, that's John Joe Lane, Connor's father, and DJ O'Sullivan, both from Bantier. Ray Hagerty is from Bride Rovers. And there's Pat, uh, Pat Kelly from Kilshannock. I think that is, in fact, John Joe Lane there at the end. Today's skipper for Tyrone, Matty Donnelly from Trillig, now in his seventh season at this level, about to play his 42nd championship match and the most important one as well. There's Ronan McNamee, the full back this afternoon. Paddy Hamsey, I wonder what task he will be given. Tiernan McCann, who's got his brother also in the panel. There are six sets of brothers. There's Colm Cavanagh, he should have quite a duel today. Cahal McShane, who scored an all-important goal, or all-important point, rather, against Meath in the first round of the qualifiers. Moving along up there, through Matty to Mark Bradley, and then there's Conor McAlisky, the men who've just come in, now that's Rory Brennan, and finally, Conor Myler from Oma. So a word from 
President O'Higgins and the President of the GAA to the skipper of Tyrone today, Matty Donnelly. What a great honour it is for him. Well, that's the uh, formal introductions completed. The two presidents will view the match like the rest of us now. What we hope will be a fitting conclusion to the inter-county football season. It's the rematch of Dublin and Tyrone. The margin was three points in over last month. Dublin hotly fancy today. Tyrone hoping to get it right this time. Let's have final words then before we start the 131st GA Football Championship. Back to Michael and the three wise men. <laughs> Thanks indeed, Ger. Actually, one of the wise men, Joe Bradley, was making the point here, watching the presentations. That's how relaxed Tyrone looked, Joe. You said. Do we have to put up with this sarcasm all the time? You get it out in the street on the way to the pitch. You get thronged. You know, yeah, Tyrone fans dancing around you, chanting, "There's no London in Tyrone." And then our own people turn on us as well. I think they look very relaxed, mm. today, and I feel that they will go out and give a performance here. I think that had they been further down the road with attacking football that we'd be talking about this in a totally different way. Mm. You have to accept, a friend of mine said, look how many Tyrone players would get on the Dublin team. Very, very few, if any. But nonetheless, whenever you go out and play football, as Mayo have shown, it brings unpredictability into the game. Mm. And if Tyrone could get a goal, and if Tyrone in the first 15 minutes can prevent Dublin from getting a goal, they could have that confidence that comes from being the underdog with nil expectations on them and it could become a very interesting game. But the key, as the boys have said, is they've got to stay in this match for 50 minutes. And touching on that, you know, the, the fact of it is, Colin Moore, that the last two All-Irelands, Dublin have won it against Mayo by a point, and one of them has been a replay. So, OK, it is fair enough to say they're a great team, which, of course, they are. Beatable. But they're not so far ahead. No, not, not but Mayo were a brilliant team as well, and mm. I think yes, maybe sure. this year we should give them credit because they are missed with their supporters and their team. They were fantastic, and if they were around mm -hmm. in any other era, they would have won an All-Ireland. But like an All-Ireland final should be a sort of a magical mystery, unpredictable tour of the pitch which inspires young people. And I would hope for that today, that the Dubs and Hill 16 expect a coronation. I hope we get a contest. If Tyrone could get a couple of goals early in the game, it would really make the whole thing interesting. But the Dublin players, I think, are, are, are brilliant individually and brilliant players adapt to circumstances and can play by instinct. And because of that, I think Dublin, I'd be surprised if they don't win comfortably. In actual fact, that has been the speculation with a lot of people down through the week in the last couple of weeks, Pat, is that this could be a very one-sided game. And in fact, the stats back it up a little bit in the sense yeah, that Dublin have won on an average of 13-point victories all through this championship. Yeah. Well, you can say a few things in favour of Tyrone. They're certainly not as one-dimensional coming into today as they did come into the semi-final. Absolutely. Match. They're certainly close to Dublin in fitness, and that's something. Yes. Mickey Hart will certainly have some trick coming up his sleeve, and they've built momentum through, through the back door. But here, lads, you're talking about one of the greatest Gaelic football teams of all time. Dublin ticks so many boxes, whether it is leadership, impact subs, composure, decision-making, confidence, fitness. But you know the key thing, Michael, the key thing, first of all, all Ireland, any All Ireland winner over the years have had at least two map key forwards. Tyrone don't have two map mm. key forwards, they mm. don't even have one. And the secondly, it's the forwards. Forwards will win All Ireland. Dublin have quality forwards on the field, quality forwards to come on. Tyrone's forward line is not of the quality to win in All Ireland. So yeah. Dublin, if they put the foot down, pedal to the metal, could win by seven or eight points. Yeah. And so before we hand over to the commentary team, I assume, lads. The three of you are on the same page the, here in terms the of statistics, the The statistics yes. make grim reading for Tyrone in their last three head-to-heads. The free taken, Dublin almost 90%, Tyrone 70%. Dublin's conversion rate 60% to Tyrone's 30%. That was when Tyrone were sitting ducks playing black at defence. Mm. Well, they need to go out and have a go at it today. Like the point about the Dubs, they, on top of everything else, all their other great attributes, they work harder than everybody else yeah. too. And they've yeah, got such brilliant their, composure. Their tackling is absolutely yeah, brilliant yeah, too. Yeah. And I don't think there's any danger of complacency no. with Dublin. And they're 12 and what I would think is true. We'll be sitting here next year. Of course, Michael, you won't be sitting here. Uh, I'll you'll be sitting out there. You'll, you'll, be, <laughs> you'll be in your holiday home in the south of France <laughs> drinking red wine. But I think we'll be here next year looking at the Dubs going for five in a row. Yeah. All right, lads, thank you very much indeed for that. Now, as ever, let me point out to you that if you'd like to hear commentary on this match in Irish, details are available on rte.ie forward slash sport. But here for us right now, it is Ger Canning and Desi Dolan. Thanks, Michael. What a setting. What atmosphere. What a day. 
Dublin the favourites. Tyrone have come with their own ideas. But when you're going for their fourth All-Ireland in a row and a sixth in eight years, you're bound to be saddled with the favourites tag. And also the onerous task, of course, of going out and justifying people's expectations. Stephen Cluxton knows all about it. Wherever football is played throughout the four corners of Ireland and among the population further afield, there's always intense interest in the showpiece of the GAA season. People remember such great matches in the past involving Dublin and involving Tyrone, and they're hoping for something special again. Before all of that, we're going to have the anthem, which will be uh, sung for us by Sen and Dunn. Darren Byrne will be conducting the Artane Band and everybody will stand and face towards the national flag for the playing of our own Navian. The anthem will also be signed by Stan and Dunn, conducted by Darren Byrne. Such noise, such anticipation. Time to get underway. The 131st All-Ireland Final, Dublin fancied on charter territory for Tyrone players. And will the sheer weight of Dublin's resources be too much for them? The man in charge is Connor Lane, his second All-Ireland Final. He was here a couple of years ago, and that was the draw match between Dublin and Mayo. It's Dublin who won the toss, and they've opted to play from left to right for the first half because they love to be playing into the hill for the second 35 minutes. The tenth meeting of these counties all since 1984 and it's underway. Kavanagh gets a touch to it, into it immediately came Cahal McShane. Here's Kieran McGeary. Looking ahead of him here he's got Michael McKernan who's making a bus burst forward. McShane once again looking to try and kick the opening point, hasn't quite got it. Opening wide of the match instead. Yeah, disappointing wide there, and that's one thing that Tyrone need to do. They need to be more efficient up, up front. Interesting to note, Kieran Kilkenny has been taken up by Tiernan McCann, and that'll be a very interesting battle today. First kick out of the match then for Stephen Cluxton. He goes short into the hands of Owen Merchant. What role will he be given? Will it be to pick up Niall Snodden once the match settles down? Brian Fenton. Back as far as Johnny Cooper. Into Philly McMahon. Swiftly forward here to Johnny Small. Back in as far as Niall Scully. Scully colliding there with a number of Tyrone players and the referee blowing his whistle, indicating just why he's awarding the free kick and the first scoring opportunity of the day for Dublin. Yeah, Peter Hart just left the arm in there a little bit too long, but interesting if you look at it, John Small passed the ball, or Philly McMahon passed the ball to John Small. Dublin are committing to the attack already. And immediately there's uh, an injury here and a worry and uh, it looks to be Colum Kavanagh who is down injured. I can just make out the number eight. And they can't afford to uh, play this match without the very influential 31-year-old from the Moy. Well, he came off second best there, being attended at the moment by Michael Hart, who is a son of Mickey, Michael the physio, and Dr Damien O'Donnell in there as well. It's Mickey Hart's 290th game in charge. As well, Jim Gavin, well, he has happy memories of playing against Tyrone in All-Ireland Finals. He played against uh, them in 1995, and he was one of Dublin scorers that day. Cavan is OK. And it'll be Dean Rock to take it, wearing number 15 today. They switch around the numbers from match to match. So we're just over two minutes gone, and just outside the D, in perfect conditions. Glorious chance for Dublin to take the lead. 
which they duly do. And Joe mentioned beforehand Dublin's accuracy from place balls. I think it's over 90% accuracy from Dean Rock this year. Oh, he's been terrific in the last number of years. One of those going for another All-Ireland, a fifth in his medal collection if he makes it today. Now Morgan now trying to organise the kick out here. And the players in front of him have gone into a kind of a grouping and then they will burst forward, as you'll see, and leave space for Carl McShane to beat his man to it there, who is Keanu O'Sullivan, playing it off here as far as Rory Brennan. Tyrone's second attack involving Mark Bradley has a very good left foot, kicking it, but not with the accuracy that was required, and that's uh, a wide either side of the post by Tyrone. Not a good start. Yeah, two disappointing misses for Tyrone, but a brilliant kick out by Niall Morgan, obviously something they've worked on in training. Jack McCaffrey now from Clontarf, taking it back here from John Small. Challenge late, but he got that ball in as far as Paul Mannion, dished off immediately there to Jack McCaffrey again, it's McCaffrey as an attacker! Oof, trying to chip the goalkeeper and Niall Morgan reached to it but there was a point for the taking and he didn't take it it's Cahal McShane instead third attack by Tyrone this time Colm Cavanagh going long very long but too long and too far beyond Mark Bradley and another one has gone astray that's three wides already yeah and Peter Hart was screaming for the ball right in front of Colm Cavanagh and you see that Jack McCaffrey that was a very routine kick and he missed it he'd be disappointed from the kick out, it's Brian Howard picking it up. What a wonderful season he's had. Lovely change of direction to take him past Colm McShane. 45 metres out now. Swiftly inside here as far as Philly McMahon up into the air. Well, a bit like the hurling match a couple of weeks ago, the uh, opening minutes of this finishing are starting with a number of inaccuracies. Yeah, and I can see Dublin forwards are doing a lot of pressing on Niall Morgan, trying to put him under a bit of pressure. But again, Philly McMahon shows you Jack McCaffrey miss Philly McMahon, but they're committing to the attack, and that's a worrying sign for Tyrone. Nicely out here as far as Kieran McGeary, holding on to it here. They say he's uh, probably better as an impact sub, but he started the last day in the semi-final against Monaghan, did enough there to retain his place. Here's Conor Myler, had been out with a hamstring injury, can't have been uh, terribly serious because he's made a very quick recovery. Holding off the challenge here of Paul Mannion is back trying to defend on his own 45 metre line and did enough that time to put the kick off and wins it back. Great play by Paul Mannion. Yeah, the side of his game has really improved this year. Made a couple of crucial tackles. I think a one in Oma, an unbelievable tackle he made, and another great interception there. It's Brian Howard once again coming forward here inside his own 65 metre line. Now a chance to look up and place it. Out for it there came the number 11, who's Conor Callaghan, the man who got a goal after a couple of minutes in the All-Ireland Final last year, and of course a goal after five against Tyrone in the semi-final. That tugged back by Matty Donnelly. So another free kick. Yeah, it's something they'll have to look at. Matty Donnelly is an experienced player, but Conor Callaghan is so direct when he gets the ball. We all remember that goal last year, but when he gets the ball in his hand, he wants to take on his man. And Tyrone need to be careful, they don't concede too many frees. Well, here is Dean Rock once again, the man who kicked Dublin to three in a row last year. Was absolutely nerveless with that last kick. Down at that end of the field as well. So this, for a perfect start for Dublin. Looking for his second point of the match. That's got away to the left-hand side, and it's what he's missed. Yeah. There's some interesting uh, matchups here. John Small has taken up Peter Hart again, and Owen Merkin, who kept Niall Sludden scoreless in Oma, is marking them, taking up that duty today again. Another brilliant kick out this time, all the way as far as Ronan McNamee by Niall Morgan. He's done really well in his kick so far, and the referee has spotted a foul inside, and it's going to be a free in for Tyrone and a chance for them to draw level yeah, after six and a half minutes. Just watching Johnny Cooper and Mark Bradley off the ball, and Johnny Cooper was just holding up for a second. Obviously, Conor Lane was very aware of that, gave the free. So Johnny needs to be careful today. See it here in front, you can see him holding him on, and Mark Bradley's trying to get away from him, and it's a definite free in. Peter Hart, the one who's going to take it from Eric Kieroy. This to put his side on level terms after seven minutes. They've had a couple of wides now, they've had more than that, they've had three, so he needs this one and he gets it. 
That's a great score from Peter. It's settled the nerves and a massive Tyrone crowd here today. Point to piece, the score's coming from free kicks. Stephen Cluxton again just trying to make certain of this one. It goes long, very long. It was Owen Merchant who was reaching for it, but he's beaten for it by Cahill McShane. And Tyrone have started this game now, or they certainly come into it more and more in the last couple of minutes. That's a great ball. That's an opportunity for Mark Bradley to kick the opening point from play, and he's put it over the bar, and Tyrone lead the All-Ireland final. All came from a poor kick out from Stephen Cluxton, but Owen Merkin under a lot of pressure. Great ball by Colin McShane, but Mark Bradley is a confidence player, and that's a nice finish to start. Both sides having four scoring opportunities so far in this game, and that's another poor kick out, and there was nothing John Small could do about it. Yeah, great pressure by Tyrone. They're going zonal, they're putting their hands up, making the presence felt, and Stephen Cluxton unusually has hit two bad kickouts. And they're intent, as you on making a match of this. You get that feeling right from the word go. Matty Donnelly. Here as far as Niall Snodden. Needs to be very involved this time. Beautifully and lovely change of direction by Mark Bradley, and then laid off splendidly and put over the bar. Really good work by the wing-back, Chirna McCann. Great play again by Mark Bradley. They're struggling to deal with his movement and a great pass off by Tierney McCann. There's a little incident off the ball. Tora Campsey and Paul Mannion. And Paul Mannion has went down to the ground and I'm not sure if the referee has picked up on it. Well, doctor and physio in immediately there. The physio, Kieran O'Reilly. And Connor Lane just checking that everything is in order. But you said it, Jared. there's one team that likes to spoil a party is this Tyrone team. And under Mickey Hart, they're obviously high on confidence after playing 10 games. This is their 10th game this year. They've been road tested in the qualifiers. Well, plenty for Jim Gavin to consider. Well, an awful lot of this match still to play. And he's not one who ever does panic. But there is a worry now about the injured player here. I'm sure Mickey Hart will be absolutely thrilled with the start his team has made. OK, they missed three chances early on, but they've shown a determination and a grit to stay with Dublin, to get in their faces, to a determination to win every ball that's going there. Yeah, Paul Mannion is asking the question, did you see it? Porrick Hampsey is a tight, tenacious, tough defender. Cluxon this time, a way out to the wings. James McCarthy manages to retain it with the help of Keanu O'Sullivan. Not an easy one for Jack McCaffrey to contain. Fenton wanted it, but McCaffrey goes forward instead to Philly McMahon. Under pressure, and Kieran McGeary with three men surrounding McMahon that time. Gives it out as far as Sladden. Now Sladden trying to take it around O'Sullivan. And again, maybe not the best option. Yeah, and that's the boys refer to the quality forwards. You need two quality forwards to win all Ireland. That wasn't the right option. He panicked and under pressure. He should have laid it off. This time there's a gap and there's an opportunity for Philly McMahon to take that kick out easily. And suddenly there's a channel opening up right through the middle of this Tyrone defence. They're funneling back in and around the D. Small should have been able to put that one over the bar. It's a bad miss. Yeah, we've seen a bad miss from Jack McCaffrey earlier on. That's another poor miss. Philly McMahon drew the man in. Great play. But John Small should have knocked that over the bar. Kick out this time is a cross here towards Rory Brennan. He's uh, subsequently fouled in by Niall Scully. A few of these Dublin players haven't really got into the match yet. Yeah, it's a rip roaring start to the match. Very enjoyable, and Tyrone are bringing it to these Dublin guys. Tierney McCann, all the way down through the centre. Taking it forward here is Conor Myler. Way out to the wings, out as far as Peter Hart. Hart, difficult one for a left footer. Switches it onto the right, and it doesn't quite work out for him. Yeah, and a little bit more composure and Tyrone could be really ahead and in that instance Mark Bradley had made a great run off Peter Hart if he laid it off it was a certain score so many chances being created by Tyrone early on he's only taken three of seven but the real intent about Tyrone in this game early on Cluxton again easy one as far as John Small nobody was picking him up chance for Niall Scully now to boot it forward here Collected by Con O'Callaghan, the cooler player. All the way across here, in considerable difficulty, Dean Rock gets it back as far as Kieran Kilkenny. 
needs to have a very influential match, you would have thought. Back to O'Callaghan again, and he was thinking about his next move, and that was enough for Kieran McGeary to nip in. And the referee has decided that it's going to be a foul, a free kick for Dublin, a foul by McGeary. In his anxiety and in his desire to try and win that possession, had the hand in over the shoulder. Yeah, you can see it. It was great play by Kieran McGeary, but at the same time, he did leave the hand in over, and definitely the referee was right in that instance. In the 13th minute of the match, and Dublin trying to get within a point of Tyrone. It's been some uh, 10 minutes now since Dublin scored in this match. Dean Rock, his third free kick, made the first. An awful lot of jeering in his ear, but he remains nice and composed, but misses again. Yeah, and dear, oh dear. Two big misses for Dean Rock early in the game. I talked about his 90% accuracy. He'll be disappointed. He's a play pressure player, and normally he gets them kicks. Are they going to have one of those days? Niall Morgan, straight down, through the centre. Hit with a lot of length, and it comes back very kindly. McGeary placing it. Knocked away there by Peter Hart, who started in the forwards, wearing number seven. And then there's a foul by Keanu O'Sullivan, and it's got to be a free in. The player was fouled, was Cahal McShane. Yeah, and Dublin are at sixes and sevens back there. Keanu O'Sullivan giving that free away, well broke down there. But you can see, just obstructed by Keno Sullivan, and the referee was right on top of that. Well, here's the first opportunity that uh, Conor McAllister has got to have to take a free kick. The number 15, who's been the uh, leading scorer for Tyrone. Two goals and 38 points this season, and 2.14 of those coming from play. The man who missed last year. He uh, damaged his cruciate in a McKenna Cup match at the beginning of January and missed the entire season for Tyrone. But so good to see him back. This is a very important kick for him. Needs to get it right, get his confidence right. 35 metres out. He's made the perfect connection, and that's the fourth point in a row for Tyrone. Yeah, I watched, Four one. I watched him in Ballion Buffet. He missed a couple of frees early on against Dublin, and his confidence drained. But it's very important, kicking into the hill, to kick a point like that. Another short kick out this time as far as Jack McCaffrey. There were a couple of wayward ones earlier on, but now they've been able to pick a few holes. But it's one back again through sloppiness. That time Brian Fenton's pass was errant and Matty Donnelly picked it up. Conor McAllister. Probing ball, interesting ball down there as far as Mark Bradley. Does some very good running. Chases after lost causes and makes angles for players coming through the centre to pick him out. He's doing a kind of Kieran Kilkenny on it there, running right across the 45 metre line. Matty Donnelly in here as far as McAllister up into the air. And another white flag and another point. Two in a row by McAllister. And the running from Mark Bradley on the inside line is causing Dublin all sorts of problems. Winning prime progression, but what a score by Conor McAllister. The 6-1 to one outsiders, 6-1 to one on outsiders, are doing well. That's Kilkenny. This is McCaffrey. Jack McCaffrey trying to cut inside here, chased by McGeary. Well, there were such hot favourites coming into this. Everybody says... Dublin don't read the papers and they don't believe the uh, hype and so on, but it must have got to some of them. Conor Callaghan underhits this one, most unlike him. Easy for Niall Morgan. Conor Myler now able to start from a deep position. The man who captained St Mary's in Belfast to the Sigerson Cup victory against UCD last year, a UCD team that contained five of Dublin's team today. Peter Hart. No challenge on him. Dublin retreating. In here as far as Max Shane. Having to carry it out to an angle here. And no proper shot on for him, so gives it back to Cavanagh. Body Hampsey now. Here's McGeary from Pomeroy. And Maddie Donnelly, the captain. 
Just slowing it down again here. It gives Dublin, however, a chance to get everybody back. All bar one now back behind the ball by Dublin. That's McKernan. I think a great first season at 20 years of age. Mark Bradley from Killy Clotter. Again, Matty Donnelly. Ready to take off through the centre now. Played off here to Cahill McShane, and McShane makes a hames of it at the end. Yeah, Lionel Sudden had made a great run off the shoulder, Matty Donnelly. I'd say Matty Donnelly fancied the opportunity, but Tyrone are dictating the play, they're holding on to possession, and Dublin right now uncharacteristically are struggling. But McCaffrey is so pacey, there's nobody coming to meet him, nobody at all. Finally able to play it off easily, giving it into Kieran Kilkenny, who kicks it mightily and over the bar. One Dublin badly, badly needed. They went nearly 18 minutes without scoring. Yeah, and he's the real leader of this Dublin team. Two goals and 21 coming into the game, all from play. When Dublin need him most, he always steps up. Now Morgan once again with the puzzle of where to kick this ball out to. Three Dublin forwards in front of him. And he can't kick it over them. Kilkenny in here. O'Callaghan like he did last year. Mannion. Oh, it's just wide. It's a penalty, however. A penalty for Dublin. Paul Mannion was the one coming in last there. Down he went. They challenged the decision, but the referee, Conor Lane, has made up his mind. This is was this was Kieran Kilkenny again. In here as far as Paul Mannion. And then a combination of Tyrone bodies coming across to meet him. And it was... Uh, not, Kieran McCann. I'm not sure, Ger, that's a penalty. I'm not sure what he could do. He got his foot to the ball. The ball went out. It looked like it was a good tackle. Tiernan McCann absolutely distraught at that. I think it was Manny Donnelly, yellow number card 10. As well. First yellow card of the match has been issued. Paul Mannion being treated. And Dublin have a goal opportunity coming up in just a moment from a penalty. Still a lot of concern about the well-being of Paul Mannion, the Kilmacud Croke player. Dean Rock will be the one who will take it. Yeah, and that all came from the poor kick out from Niall Morgan. You can see it coming here. Well, actually, Tiernan McCann, it was a block. I can see it now. I, I was looking at Mally Donnelly, and you see Tiernan McCann blocking him, like obstructing his kick. So you can see where Conor Lane is coming from. The decision, anyway, is a penalty for Dublin. And, in fact, it's not going to be Dean Rock who's going to take it. He's walking away from it. The man who was injured taking that in there. Paul Mannion is the one who's going to hit it. The man who scored a goal already in this championship against Longford. But that was quite a while back. Leinster semi-final. Well, Niall Morgan will be disappointed. He started the game so well. The kickouts were excellent. And just one poor kickout, and that shows you the level that's required. Back on his feet again comes Matty Donnelly. Several injured bodies in that particular collision. The end result was Kieran McCann getting a yellow card, Dublin getting a penalty, and an opportunity now to tie up the match here in the 21st minute. It's Niall Morgan in goal against Paul Mannion from Dublin. There have been so many critical penalties in all Ireland finals down the years. Some converted, some missed. This one is well and truly struck home by Paul Mannion. A brilliant finish by Paul Mannion, a goal and eight up to today. But a real conference player, he's been excellent this year, and that is a brilliant finish. The teams are level. Dublin 1-2, to Tyrone 5 points. After all the hard work that Tyrone had been doing, they have been pegged back, brilliantly taken, well dispatched. This time it's a difficult kick out for McGeary to hold on to. Kilkenny playing it inside here, and that ball knocked it over the bar. Dean Rock with his second. Yeah, and there's a concern with Niall Morgan. If the kick out start going bad, his confidence can drain. Another poor kick there, and Dean Rock, he'd be delighted to get that one over the bar. Well, there have been mistakes in this first half by both teams, but plenty of excitement as well. From this kick out, it's down there towards Brian Fenton. He wins this one, storms his way through here now. Dishes it off to Conal Callahan. Back outside, it comes to Dean Rock. 
rock. And the cheer will tell you it's gone between the uprights. And he's got a third. Great play by Brian Fenton in the midfield, winning primary possession. And again, well laid off. And Dean Rock, fantastic finish. You can see it here, an opportunity perhaps to tuck the point. Good decision. Well, he's so sharp, either from freeze or from open play. Well, now Niall Morgan has got to get this one right. That time, Conor Kavanagh was uh, about to jump for it. James McCarthy gave him a little nudge in the back, and the referee blows his whistle and gives the free kick to Tyrone. So from their own kick-out, at least they get possession and an opportunity to carry it downfield. Yeah, Niall Morgan seems to be going long a lot of his kicks there's not many options Dublin forwards are pressing extremely hard on the Tyrone kick out Matty Donnelly as far as Conor Myler looking to really stamp his imprint on this match giving it in here as far as Carl McShane switching around well and knocking it over the bar a good point by Carl McShane he spun brilliantly and kicked with accuracy so it's a one point game once again yeah, and an important score for Tyrone to respond quickly to the goal conceded a couple of moments ago. Well, Dublin just showed us there in those couple of minutes of play when they managed to get a goal and two points, the goal from the penalty, the amount of danger that they still present for this Tyrone defence. James McCarthy fouled, ready to take the free kick himself. Conor Calhoun always making himself available. His marker is Michael McKernan. Dean Rock, back once again here, O'Callaghan, great play, held off well, Kieran Kilkenny, so many Tyrone players around him, and in the end he held on too long, good pressure play by Tyrone to force the error on Kilkenny. And Tyrone will be delighted with the amount of turnovers that had in this half, it shows great intent, great work rate. Two very, very fit teams, well conditioned, ready for this fray, and taking off here is Conor McAllisky. The ball is accurately in here to Peter Hart. Hart with the block on it. In it goes. Well taken there. And it's Mannion. Well, he's up of one end scoring penalties. He's back defending at the second end or the other end. And that's twice he's done that. Valuable interceptions on his part. Niall Scully. He's having quite a match, isn't he? Yeah, Paul Mannion this year has been exceptional for Dublin, but his defensive duties are, are really fantastic. He really gets back, wins primary possession, and right back in his full-back plane intercepted that ball. Keanu O'Sullivan, nicely struck into the path of Kilkenny, able to lay it off here as far as James McCarthy. Switched across, Dean Rock taking on Ronan McNamee, helped out. That's got a drop over the bar via the hand of Niall Morgan from Jack McCaffrey, his second point in this year's championship, his first today, and he makes it 1-5 to six points. Yeah, he pops up everywhere, and Jack McCaffrey, brilliant finish there, a crucial score for Dublin. Out towards Peter Hart. Great ball across if it can work out. Doesn't have too much pace. There's a lot of work to do to keep it in, and they haven't managed to do it. But tough for Conor McAllister. Well, that long ball is working extremely well for Tyrone. Dublin inside full back line, and obviously Mickey Hart has identified that as a weakness. And if he can get enough ball in there, they'll cause trouble that Tyrone full forward line. Dublin are about to make a change, I can tell you, because there's problems here for Keanu O'Sullivan, and they have Michael Fitzsimons ready on the sideline, ready to come in. And it's a bit of a miracle that he managed to make it in the first place. Yeah. Remember, he went off injured three weeks ago in he's the a, he's semi. A, he's a lot of problems with his hamstrings, and if it's a muscular injury like that, there's no coming back from it. And I'd be surprised to see Keenan O'Sullivan staying on the pitch. Well, this is the. It's very disappointing for Keane. It is. He's ultimate professional, a brilliant player, and obviously that hamstring wasn't ready for the game. So Mick Simons comes on, he was part of the team that won the All-Ireland back in 2011, he was the man of the match as well in the past in an All-Ireland final replay. Keanu Sullivan's day over his seventh All-Ireland final, including a replay, he's some player but unfortunately the injury has taken its toll. 1-5 to 6 points, that's 8 points to 6. Very generous and warm round of applause for Keanu Sullivan. Big favourite with the Dublin fans, the Kilmacott Croaks player, 30 years of age. Today was playing in his 47th championship match. He's always been a star. And Mick Fitzsimons going straight into the full-back line. Very tight, tenacious defender as well, so 
He can play anywhere, can't Yeah, he? he's a great player. Got man the match a couple of years ago in the other final. Foxton kicking it into the centre here. Touchdown by Brian Fenton. Onto it was coming Johnny Cooper. He was pushed out of the way, however. Unnecessarily on the part of the uh, Tyrone defence because the ball is now with Niall Scully and there's more threat to that Tyrone rearguard. Conor Callahan, lovely deception, takes it in. No penalty this time, but there's a goal instead from Niall Scully. His third championship goal. Remember, he got two here against Johnny Gall in the Super 8. He's got one here in the 28th minute. And brilliant play again by Conor Callahan. He's really doing well. Very direct running, created that opportunity for Niall Scully and a brilliant finish. And all of a sudden, there are five points between the teams, but O'Callaghan takes so much of the credit. The referee says play on, there was no penalty, and Niall Scully into benefit. Two five to six points all of a sudden. A game where up to the 21st minute, Tyrone were in front. Pushed there by James McCarthy, the free taken by McGeary. Down here as far as Colm Cavanagh, they need to see more from him. That's wayward, very wayward. He's given it to Johnny Cooper. And Cooper plays it out as far as McMahon. And away they go through Kieran Kilkenny again in the 2018 All Ireland final. David had an obvious pass to give and now does so eventually to Brian Howard. Back it comes again as far as Kilkenny. Typical run across the field here to try and reset the attack. And coming in is McCaffrey at pace. Run into the block of Matty Donnelly. Back out to McMahon. Beautifully inside here and held superbly by Paul Mannion. Immediately surrounded. Tierney McCann wanted those to dispossess him. They were looking for a free kick, Dublin fans, but the referee says play on. They do, getting it out as far as Connor Myler. Myler foul, free kick. Yeah, and a crucial stage for Tyrone. They're really starting to struggle. Dublin are up in the ante the last couple of minutes. The likes of Paul Mannion, Kieran Kilkenny, and Jack McCaffrey are turning on their style. McGeary now trying to turn on the style for Tyrone. Has Rory Brennan there to assist? His brother, of course, Lee, in the subs, might well make an appearance later on, possibly for Mark Bradley here. Very similar types of players. Here's Matty Donnelly. Seventh season playing for Tyrone, given the captaincy when uh, Sean Kavanagh retired. Ronan McNamee, important now that Tyrone try to get the next score for their own confidence, their five adrift. It's Michael McCurdy, who scored a brilliant point like that against uh, Dublin before half-time in Oma, but not here. Yeah, Already poor option. The wide's mounting up. Yeah, yeah. Ada White tells the story, but a very poor option for Michael Cairn. Wrong side for a right foot a kicker. And Dublin, at the way they're playing at the minute, they need to be more composed and try not give away any more scores. And now they're finding gaps in that Tyrone defence. Kilkenny. Mannion is on his way, Kilkenny holds, kicks high. Has he got it though? I don't think so. Just pulled to the left and narrowly wide. But Kieran Kilkenny, Conor Callan, Paul Mannion, they're all so direct. And that's what Tyrone are starting to struggle with. They're putting so much pressure out the field that they can't get back. They're creating one-on-one -on -one opportunities, Dublin, in their own forward line. And Tyrone are struggling to deal with it. Well, they've won this kick out and it's Colm Cavanagh again now. Switch of formations really in the last couple of matches by Tyrone. Still adjusting to the way in which they're trying to become a more offensive team. Peter Hart has certainly started this match on a high in there in that half forward line, as it were. Giving it out here to Myler, slipping it in, but it's too far. Mikalski does well, did really well. Johnny Cooper came out after him, so too did McMahon and down with Mikalski, but there's no free kick given. Who got the last touch? Well, the last touch went off Myler. Yeah, great play by Dublin again. Waited for him to pick up the ball, knew that the line was going to mark him out, and Johnny Cooper, great pressure. Four minutes to go to half time. Brian Fenton. Here comes Kieran Kilkenny. Looking now to try and dominate this game, where they started very unsure of themselves and very uncertain, and it was Tyrone who dominated the opening quarter of an hour, really. Had a couple of bad misses and then settled in and got some decent scores. But those goals have certainly rocked Tyrone. Scully, back to Mannion. Once again, as they did last year in the semi-final, they're using width and they're opening it out here and Tyrone are having to chase around after them and use up valuable energy. Here's the first touch for Michael Fitzsimons. Into Jack McCaffrey. 
road in their block, so he has to turn it back again to Dean Rock. Now John Small. After him goes Cahill McShane. Nice transfer as far as Kieran Kilkenny again. Looking to try and make some inroads here. It's Simons, only just on the field a little while, wriggling his way in and out. Gives it off to Dean Rock, and it ends with a lovely point. Such patience, such persistence, but such great football as well. Played by Dublin. Yeah, brilliant play, but Michael McKernan and Conor Collins struggling badly. And the more this game goes on, Tiernan McCann cannot keep up with Karen Kilkenny, and Mickey Hart needs to make changes. Well, this was the goal that uh, was scored by Niall Scully after 28 minutes, nearly five minutes ago, and now it's 2-6 to six points. What a year he is having. That man, Niall Scully, always creeps up for the goals. Well, he's got three this season so far. He's not the highest scorer by any matter of means, but his work rate is immense, and you wouldn't leave out of the team for the very simple reason that he's one of those players you don't always notice what he's doing, but he's back there, he's foraging, he's trying, and he's working hard. Yeah, brilliant player. And plays to the system, keeps the weight. But Tyrone really need to get to grips with Connor Callan in the full forward line. We just saw Cormac Costello there having words with Jim Gavin. Well, if he comes on, he's always good for three or four, you know. Haven't reached half time yet. Dublin leading at the moment by double scores. Niall Morgan summing up what's on. The first attempt was to try and get it out to McGeary, but he's going to bypass him now and go long to Colin Cavanagh, having a battle there with Fenton, and Fenton got the fingers tip to it and touched it down to James McCarthy, combining well in the middle of the park. Paul Mannion ready to take off and try and go past Paulie Hamsey. Oh, he's got such pace. He's still going, and Hamsey reached in and saved it from going behind. That's brilliantly done. Superb defence by Paddy Hamsey. Back out as far as Matty Donnelly. But it just shows the determination, the discipline, the skill and the football this Tyrone team possesses. Back into Peter Hart. Touchdown as far as Matty Donnelly now. Ready to try and take on Kieran Kilkenny to another Kieran. Kieran McGeary kicking it. He's always good for a score or two, but not today. They've missed too many. They've kicked nine whites. Yeah, and that's a concern coming into today's game. Have to the marquee forwards to win in All-Ireland, and nine whites in the first half is a very disappointing return. They've created 13 chances. Dublin have created 15 chances. There's going to be four minutes of added time at the end of the opening 35. So plenty of football still to be played before the break. Kilkenny all the way back here as far as Michael Fitzsimon into Johnny Cooper man of the match against Tyrone last month when they met in the Super 8 up in Oma Jack McCaffrey man of the match last year when they played here against Tyrone in the semi-final and he hasn't finished not earlier on what a run Jack McCaffrey he's electric when he gets the ball but Tyrone are struggling their game plan is failing at the minute up front, I think the real problems are they can't hold on to possession right now, and the kickouts are not working either. Well, this one has certainly gone out over the sideline in spite of the best attempts of Kieran McGeary to try and keep it in. And Mickey Hart must be wondering what he can do. Well, he's got the half time break coming up in about three and a half minutes' time to assess things. Goalkeepers are so important, those restarts. Taken in by Roland McNamee, the Ahi Aaron player. Out to Conor Myler. Myler's work rate is always very good. This time held off by Brian Fenton. Fenton still going after him. And Fenton, with the help there of Johnny Cooper, wins it back. And all of a sudden there's a platform for the star attackers to try and show what they can do. And it's Conor Callaghan to try and add to the scoring and taken down by Colin Cavanagh, edge of the D. And the referee is taking the notebook out. Yeah, another turnover, Brian Fenton, great play, but Colin Kavanagh might be lucky to get away with a black card here. Again, Conor Callaghan so direct with his running, he's so hard to manage. And well, I think uh, Colin Kavanagh just got a, a noting, as it were, I didn't see any card being flashed in his direction, so he's lucky. And there's another free kick coming up, and it'll be Dean Rock to try and get his fifth of the match. And half-time can't come quick enough for Mickey Hart to get his players into the dressing room, address some of the issues. And he'll also be looking at his subs bench to see is there anything there. He's got the likes of Harry Lockram to come in, Declan McClure as well, Lee Brennan I mentioned earlier. I was surprised we don't see them. Dean Rock. 
taking maximum care over this. Every kick so important, every point so vital. He's got a fifth. And the start of the game off, five points to one to Tyrone, and all of a sudden it's two seven to six points to Tyrone. So one point in 20 minutes is a serious problem. Jim Gavin's team have worked out for themselves exactly what they had to do. They've now limited Tyrone to a blank for the last 14 minutes. And Tyrone need to get a score before half-time. That kick out straight to Billy McMahon. Gives it away. The referee's bringing the play back, however, there was no advantage. He's actually giving him the mark. Even uh, though Philly held it for a split second, he's very lucky in that instance. Well, he's got it. And now it's Conor Callaghan who's got it. Quick and direct as usual, giving it to Kieran Kilkenny. Kilkenny deciding, I'll have a go. That's not going to go near the goal, however, but it's still dangerous. And the referee again blows his whistle. And this time decides there's a foul by Paul Mannion. And there's a Dublin player on the ground, by the way, up at the other end of the field. It's John Small, I think, who's down. Edge of the D. Doctor and physio in again to attend to him. And referee Conor Lane making his way down. Not sure what happened to the injured player. Let's see. John Small is number five. He's right just there by the D. Oh, there he is. Down he went. Now, was he struck? Well, every indication is yeah. that he was Look, struck. he raised his hand. I don't think there was much intent in it, but he did raise his hand, and that's the worry now. Conor Lane has a decision to make. Now, the referee has had a quick word with his two umpires. The man who is marking uh, Johnny Cooper at the moment, as you can see, is Peter Hart. John Small still requiring attention. The referee is telling them all to go away, so no indications immediately that he's going to speak to anybody on the Tyrone side. Yeah, and it's a very worrying time. Peter Hart, look, he raised the arm, but at the same time, I don't think there was much intent in it. And by raising your arm, you leave yourself in jeopardy of getting the card. Well, the uh, four minutes has now been played, as you can see. John Small is OK. And the referee indicating that play is going to continue with uh, a kick out of free, in fact, at the other end. Niall Morgan on a ground where he scored five points against Dublin in the 2013 All-Ireland um, National League final. Bobby Hampson in as far as Max Shea trying to turn this way and that. Now showing a bit of acceleration. Dublin track him. Really good play by O'Callaghan to stay with him. One back by Philly McMahon. Kicked out neatly to Dean Rock, and then away comes Brian Howard from Rahini. Paul about switching it away to the right-hand side. Looks up, there's one player ahead of him, and that's enough. Up as far as Owen Merchant, the 21-year-old from Nafiana. Gives it off inside to Howard again, two youngsters. Howard, surely one of the great finds of this year for Dublin. Merchant as well, one of the under-21 stars from last year. Well, they're just playing key ball here now, waiting for the referee's whistle to sound, and there it is, the end of the opening half, where Dublin go in, leading at the break. They've got uh, seven points of a lead at this stage. Mickey Hart will have been happy enough with the opening 21. They led at that stage, but then Paul Mannion converted a penalty on 21 minutes, and Niall Scully got a second for Dublin some seven minutes later. Dublin are very much in the driving seat in the uh, 2018 All-Ireland Football Final. Here's Mickey Hart season. and his team staying behind. They'll go off as the second team. They've a lot to do. Half-time score, it's Dublin 2-7 to Tyrone. Six points. In a moment, we'll be back. Supervalley will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA clubs. Proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship.
So, we have reached the halfway point in the 2018 All-Ireland Football Final and, as it stands, it is Dublin who have the advantage. They lead Tyrone by two goals and seven points to six points. By the way, watch out in a little while for our latest Sunday game competition because you could be heading off on your holidays with a big wallet of money. Colin Work, we saw an unusual thing just at the halftime whistle there. The Tyrone team stayed out on the pitch. Mickey Hart gathered them around him. And we were, you know, I mean, I wasn't... I'd, I'd say probably it was the first decade of the rosary that started there because the team now is shell-shocked after what went on. Like, for 17 or 18 minutes, this was brilliant stuff yeah. by Tyrone. They attacked, they went five points to one up. They looked like a team that, you know, had all the answers. And then it's as if somebody really put their hand in the lion's mouth and Dublin responded like true champions and 2-6 to a point for mm. the remainder. And the game is probably over now at this stage. But what we saw was Dublin greatness under pressure. When they were forced to really play, they did play. They just dismantled the Tyrone kick out. There was a bad McShane wide up at one side of the field. It came down till Kenny got a point. Then a bad Morgan kick out. It led to the penalty and a goal, and since that, he's been in trouble with his kickouts. Dublin completely overrunning Tyrone. I understand, by the way, lads, that uh, Tyrone were instructed to stay out on the field so the two teams wouldn't clash in. But I tell you, the, the clashes on the field, Desi said in the commentary there, the half time can't come quick enough for Tyrone. It can't, because first of all, can I say, it's been an enjoyable first half of football, and credit to Tyrone, they turned up and they tried to make a game for it, and they went for it. And they got their matchups right. Tiernan and McCann and K on Kieran Kilkenny for the first 17 minutes never touched the ball. Peter Hart working Keen O'Sullivan, brilliant. And they played an attacking game. They went for it. They went 5 1 up. But you know, and this is the great thing about champions. This is what we say about Dublin all the time this composure and decision making. They don't do panic. They settle down, figured it out, and then they went full throttle. And you know, like Colm said, 2 6 to 1 point for the second quarter. But you know, the game is in inches, it can sometimes be decided in inches. In the space of three minutes, three minutes, three bad kickouts lead yes. to one goal and two points. Game over. The second thing is what I highlighted at the start is forward play. At the start, of the, I mean, at, at half time, Tyrone Forwards have scored three points on play. They've converted six out of 14 chances. That's not good enough. Nine wide, 22 minutes without a score. But Dublin in the last quarter were ruthless. Absolutely ruthless and brilliant. Yeah. They're ruthless, brilliant, and Colin thinks the game is over. Oh, the game's over. I mean, the, the, the situation was I read it, that Dublin were meandering in the first mm. 14, 15 minutes. They weren't really getting it. And I thought that possibly for the first time, a team affected by all the hype, you know, yeah. thrown 12 yeah. to 1 to win. Four in a row of formality, no because issue. I, around I this. said that to you during the first half, Colm. I said Dublin look a bit scattered here. Yes, but once they, but yeah. once they started, they're so ruthless no then. Panic. And I think that you know the, the pounce on the kickout. Yeah. And and the beauty of that was that Dublin were gambling on winning that kickout because mm. Con O'Callaghan mm. held his ground. He was there with his hands up. The ball's through to him now. The goal's on. But the way the penalty was dispatched, it was like saying to Tyrone, boys, I know you've enjoyed this period of mm. fun. Mm. But the fun and games over. are over. And then to marvel at Dublin's individual skills, I tell you, I hope they've clipped up a point. I asked them. I think it's the best point I've ever seen in Croke Park on Ireland Finals Day. Tyrone did absolutely nothing wrong for Dublin's second last point, mm. and yet they managed to score it. And their efficiency, their ruthlessness, their individual skills. I asked you this question. How did this team never go out and pulverise Mayo? I tell you, Mayo must be a hell of a team to be able to live with that the way they did. All right, that's, we have another break coming up in a moment. But just to take us there, why don't you have a go at our big competition here this afternoon? We've teamed up with O'Neill's Sports, who are celebrating 100 years, by giving you the chance to win an amazing dream holiday for you and your family to anywhere in the world. Whether you take a trip down under, soak up the sun in the Caribbean, road trip across the USA, or see the far-off sites of South America, Africa or Asia, the choice is all yours. You'll enjoy a luxury holiday to the value of €5,000, plus O'Neill's Sports will also give you €3,000 spending money to make it the trip of a lifetime. For your chance to win, answer this. Which of these is a well-known terrace in Croke Park? Is it Hill 10, Hill 16 or Hill 20? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82 or text the word GAME followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost €2.03. Calls from other networks may be higher. 
Viewers in the North can also text to 57001 or call the number on screen. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, September 10th. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed. game better when you've all the facts. This year, Super Value will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA Clubs, proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship. Welcome back to the programme. A reminder of the half-time scoreline. Dublin leading Tyrone by two goals and seven points to six points. And a big hello, of course, to all the people watching all around the world our All-Ireland final today, and especially for the personal message from all the guys in Muddy Murphy's in Singapore. Thank you very much. Hope you're enjoying the match. Let's get back to the match. You guys were making uh, uh, much comment before the break about the Tyrone kickouts and how Dublin were, if you like, intercepting them and all that. And that, is, that has been well, central to the whole thing. Well, for the first 17 minutes, he was impeccable with his kickouts. Then in the space of two minutes, he self-destructed a, a scuffed kickout that goes straight to Conor Callan, laid it on, uh, and the penalty. So that's, that's, that's a goal out of that. Immediately after that, another kickout. Dublin win the ball, go up and score. The thing about the Dubs is they're so clever. The first two kickouts, they went man to man and Tyrone won them. And they then immediately converted to zonal press. Mm. And since then, Morgan's been under a huge this pressure. Is number three. A young man who's had the jitters before, and Dublin take full of. They are so ruthless. Once they get a wee roll on them, that was the game over. And what's striking to see at close hand is their pace, their individual versatility, their skills, the way they roll out of tackles, and how the, way they, the way their heads are up all the time. It's just so hard to play how against. How unselfish yeah. they are on the ball. They're always giving the ball to a better yeah. position. And just they highlighted Dean Rock there. I mean, Dean Rock is often recognised as just a free taker. Last year in the all Ireland final, he got four points on play. Today, he's got three points on play. Yeah. And some of those points on play were from really difficult oh, sure. angles. And this was after him missing two relatively yeah, yeah. easy frees yeah. for him. But I think what has happened in the second part of that half is all the big Dublin players have turned up. Fenton, O'Callaghan, Dean Rock. I think putting Kieran McCann on Kieran Kilkenny is now seen to be a mistake because Kilkenny is beginning to get to into the game. And McCann has lost them as an attacking force for Tyrone. So I think Tyrone need to do a few changes. But the whole tide now has switched yes. irrevocably. Well, I want to ask you guys about a couple of incidents that happened in the first half there, Joe. Uh, the John Small incident being one of them. I was talking to the panel yeah. about this. I don't think you've got any conclusive no, I mean, outcome it, on it, this. It doesn't look good, but I was just finishing the point that one of the great joys of watching the dubs is their ability to kick pass over a distance. Yes. And we've seen that to great effect. But in, the first in this half. incident here, John Small shouldn't have laid down. He shouldn't have been down. It's harmless it what has happened. And he should be a bit more manly. Uh, look, let, but let's, let's look. We'll be accused of being favourable to one and not in front of blind eye to another. Let's call a spade a spade. Uh, his hand connected with, with Small's face. It's a striking action in the book. It's this a sending a, off of face. It looks like a striking it's, action. It to looks, me, yeah. It's a striking yeah. action into the face. Pat, I hope you're not going to be infected by the but disease. But I'm not. But I'm just, I'm just making the point that in strictly yes, part yes, of the rules, yeah. That's a sending off. And I suppose uh, they we're also making the point about Colin Kavanagh, who might consider himself lucky not to have got Very a black lovely. card there. Very fortunate. Yeah. And Colin, Cal uh, Colin Kavanagh started to get him off well, but again, like all the Tyrone players now, he's suffered and under this intense pressure because uh, you made the point, Dublin looks scattered, I think the word you used early mm. on. They looked a bit leggy. And I was beginning to think for a while, have they lost their edge? Oh, and, yeah, they, and they looked yeah. a bit leg weary. And then as if somebody just turned mm. the switch and everything happened, the likes of Howard and Fenton, and all that hard running, and the level of fitness yeah, and athleticism, just, and sheer skill under pressure in doing the right thing with the ball, the has been incredible. But you know, yeah, it's, the, it's the electric pace all of a sudden, and their movement off the ball. I mean, I was talking yeah. to Sean Cavanagh about it this outside, and he was saying, like, we were talking about the lack of Tyrone's attack and chemistry here today, because they've only converted to this three weeks ago. Talking about his team, Brian McGuigan, Peter Canavan, Mulligan. I mean, they were playing since they were minors. They're coming off the shoulder. They know the second pass, the third pass. But to see yeah. everything's cohesive. With Tyrone today, they're entirely but disjointed. They've, they've waited a the year yeah. too late too to late. change tact. Yeah. They should have changed tact. But with Dublin, Michael, they are in their attack. There's so much variety to that. Yeah, they brilliant. can kick pass long. Their movement on and off the ball. Their angles of running. Their support play. Their decision making. They just, they just tick so many boxes. I mean, brilliant look, to watch. We're looking at a and that's before team. McManaman and Costello and Flynn appear. Yeah. We're looking at yeah. a class team. All right, lads, thanks for that. Let's see what happens in the second half then. Let's go back to the commentary box to rejoin Jerk Canning and Desi Dolan. 
Thank you very much indeed, Michael. Yeah, we don't see any more changes being made by either team. I can tell you, by the way, it's a full house, which means over 82,000 people, as in the hurling final, full house today. It's very, very warm down on the field. Should emphasise that. It's about 23 to 24 degrees. Conor Lane ready to restart the second half. Clearly, he didn't have any view of that foul there, which looked a foul, certainly on the part of uh, Peter Hart when he uh, was... Uh, aiming his arm towards John Small, shall we say. Second half gets underway, seven between them. Tyrone, like they did in the first half, looking to try and get away to a good start here. Tiernan McCann held on to just about there. And eventually, Conor Myler wins the free kick, and away quickly to Tiernan McCann. They haven't scored since the 23rd minute of the first half. They need something special. They get it right from the very beginning here. And it's once again Conor McAllister who gets it, his third of the match. Yeah, great play, Tiernan McCann driving up the pitch, laying it off. And Conor McAllister, if you give him that kind of space and kick points all day, one concern for Tyrone is Colin Kavanagh looks to be carrying a leg injury. And he is such an important player for them, usually playing in and around the D there. And he comes now, as you can see, to challenge Brian Howard. Howard lost him completely. Next challenge is against Tiernan McCann, he held on too long, free kick. Yeah, great pressure there. Colin Cavanagh coming out, Tiernan McCann getting around him, and Tyrone will gain a lot of confidence from that. Well, it's a Tyrone team that got, went from the uh, two sweepers and everybody back, and they're trying something different. And was mentioned at the break by Pat Spillane. They got their matchups right in the opening 20 minutes, certainly. Now you can try and make a match of this one. Six adrift, held on to by Mark Bradley. It's the line ball. Calls us, and uh, that is a line ball. Yeah, David Goff called it back for a line ball. Lines one today, David Goff and Paddy Nealon on the other flank. Mikalowski booting it in, probing ball inside here, one well. Rory Brennan playing it back as far as Connor Myler. Chance for McGeary, and he pops it over the bar, two in a row. Good start to the second half by Tyrone, where it was seven, it's now back down to just five. Yeah, very well worked, well worked score there. Good patience for Ray and They need to keep this push on. A couple of early scores and the outlook might change. They finished very strongly, as you might remember, in Oma four weeks ago. Got it back to within two points, then had a free kick which Ronan O'Neill missed rather badly. Here comes Kieran Kilkenny. Coming forward, Brian Howard. Lovely transfer, nice movement. Also confident, really good move. Steen Rock taking Ronan McNamee with him back to Howard again. Drops in front of Brian Fenton, ready to spin, ready to strike and score. So patient from this Dublin team and Brian Fenton, as he done so many times this year, popping up the right place with a fantastic finish. And the one thing that this Dublin team do, they're hugging the sidelines all the time, creating holes in that Tyrone defence. That point just epitomises the kind of skill and the kind of patience and great footballing craft that is present in Jim Gallon's team. John Small in there trying to win that one with Peter Hart. They're having quite a duel, the two of them. Are taking it. Kieran McGeary already scored. On to McShane, another one of their scorers. Back to McGeary, promising. In came Jack McCaffrey, down went McGeary. Referee says play on. Dublin trying to win it back. Ball loose, McCaffrey eventually picking it up. After him goes Mark Bradley. It was a great opportunity from Kieran McGeary to knock it over the bar. Looking for the free, didn't give it. The referee, Conor Lane, didn't give it in that instance. And Dublin drive out again. Their decision-making has to be absolutely right in this second half to row. If they're to seriously challenge the champions of the last three years. Bidding for four in a row today. As a Dublin player on the ground right now, as play continues, Owen Merchant down, receiving attention. Meanwhile, Brian Howard kicks it across here to Paul Mannion. Back in as far as Niall Scully, one of the goal scorers. Brian Howard now hasn't scored so far, fancying his chances, getting a point in the All-Ireland football final. Young Brian Howard is 20 years of age, a DIT student. What an impact this guy has made this year in the championship. Because kicked a couple of points in Oma, Great point there, and see all Merchant, he comes down the ball and Niall Scullin comes over him. He's lucky in a way, and I am on Merchant. Yeah, he he's, is, he's holding he? his leg. He is, that, that, was, uh, that would have been a black card. Yeah, black card there. Had it been spotted. 
So Tyrone got two points, Dublin have got two points, and now in comes Lee Brennan. And the player going off is going to be Connor Myler. But Connor Myler only recently recovered from injury. They got uh, 39 minutes out of him anyway. Now Lee Brennan, once this game opens up, if he can get decent possession, he can threaten. Very, very good left boot. Merchant OK, as you can see, everybody fit and raring to go. Opening five minutes of the second half, still seven points the margin. James McCarthy touching it down, but in doing so, knocking it out of play. It'll be a Tyrone line ball, and it'll be Cahill McShane who will take it. Back to Tiernan McCann. Colum Cavada needing to exert a bigger, much bigger influence on the match. Now a quick change of direction, he's found space. Trying to get free, but uh, held on to it. Then Rory Brennan takes it, on to Niall Slodden. Slodden kicking for 45 metres out. But the cheers are Dublin cheers, because it's missed. Tenth wide by Tyrone. Yeah, and Owen Merchant has marked him up in Oma, kept him scoreless. Today, Niall Slodden is not making the impact we'd expect. He scored three goals and 13 points in the championship up to now, but struggling today. Cluxton's kick across here, beautifully held onto by Brian Howard. He's got great hands, brilliant vision as well to pick out Brian Fenton, who's got a player in support here. Onto it comes Philly McMahon, then the challenges, good block down. One well by Paddy Hampsey, the Coal Island player. Really good work because there was a point there for the taking for Dublin. Tyrone countering, Peter Hart trying to get by John Small. Small goes back at him. Once again, it's Peter Hart and it's going to be a free in this time. So an opportunity to chip one point back and straight away taking over the free-taking duties is going to be Lee Brennan. This is what happened. Yeah. Kept the arms. Look, not much in it, but at the same time, probably a free. But great play by Brian Howard. Kicked a nice point a couple of moments ago. Just shows you his range of skills for his first championship. And this time the referee uh, issuing a yellow card. It's to John Small. So the two number fives have been yellow carded by the match referee. Free coming up. Lee Brennan to take. 40 three metres or thereabouts from the target now can he put it over catches it well he's got it good start by Lee Brennan with his free taking yeah of course in Valley Buffet the substitutions came on scored 2-5 they need to do something similar today but a very good start to the match by Lee Brennan well he's the player who's put up some amazing scores in the last 12 months at club level but this is so different Stephen Cluxton. And that man, Stephen Cluxton, he's kicked out 13 hours, 16 have been converted. And Niall Morgan, on the other hand, seems to be going along an awful lot today. Johnny Cooper starting off the next attack with James McCarthy flying forward, bypassing Kavanaugh completely, flicked it out to the wing. Kavanaugh remained centrally positioned. Back to Kilkenny. They're just moving around the settled Tyrone defence. They were looking for a free kick with John Small down with the referee just play on. You have the ball, for goodness sake. In comes Scully. Having to go back again. Well, the Tyrone defence in position, as you expect, and that time it's a poor ball, very poor ball. Mistake that time by Brian Howard allows Tyrone to counter and Cahill McShane kicking it up to Lee Brennan. About to be challenged by Owen Merchant, but Merchant can't get close enough to him. Hanging in the air for the goalkeeper to be able to take. And Michael Fitzsimons sweeps it down to James McCarthy again. Dublin continuing to lead by two goals here. All the way back from John Small. Johnny Cooper now. An automatic choice for Dublin over the last couple of years to Con O'Callaghan. So important. Here's Kilkenny. Cracking it with the right, following through brilliantly and putting it over. His second, one in each half. Yeah, that came from a very poor kick by Lee Brennan. Should have laid it off to somebody. But Kieran Kilkenny, on the other hand, is getting the better of Tiernan McCann. And they're so quick, they're relentless, these forwards. The pressure to put on the Tyrone team at the minute. Tyrone trying to eat into the seven-point lead once again. It's Colum Cavada, that's a bad ball. 
Well, he was looking for Michalowski in there, but only finding Philly McMahon. And it's an opportunity for Niles Scully now just to hold on on his own 45 meter line. No great hurry on his part. Lots of pressure, however, on the part of Rory Brennan. Too much of it. Wasn't disciplined enough. Kieran Kilkenny picking himself up. Yeah, and Kieran Kilkenny did well. Very strong in possession, holding on to it and won the free. But that's out in midfield. He's popping up everywhere at the minute. We could have another change very shortly by Mickey Hart. Frank Burns about to come in. Jack Caffrey dispossessed. Really good work. Super play back there by Niall Sludden to win that. And he's got it again. Needs to take off now. Needs to dominate. Tiernan and McCann. Matty Donnelly. All the way back to chase after him came Conor Callaghan. Picking it up as Mark Bradley. And Bradley between the uprights for his own second point of the match. Yeah, what, a, what an interception by Niall Sludden. Brilliant play there. And that's what Tyrone need. Their leaders to stand up. The likes of Matty Donnelly, Peter Hart. Going off, by the way, is going to be Niall Sludden. Wasn't his day. And Frank Burns comes on. And who won an under-21 medal with uh, Tyrone against Tiff three years ago. And he's got his chance now of playing in a senior All-Ireland final. It doesn't come around all that terribly often for most of the counties, as we know, only too well. Trying to make the most of the opportunity presented. And we're just 11 minutes into the second half. And that's Johnny Cooper. Huge cheer from the fans going down there under the weight of that challenge was uh, Kieran McGeary Jim Davin loved to have a fair like Johnny Cooper and his team he's fearless, tenacious, tight tough defender well he's a very very difficult opponent that's for sure but so many of these are Brian Fenton here and the referee again brings this back and there could be trouble here and the referee having words with, I think it's Kieran McGeary. And he's been shown the black book and he's off. Black card. Yeah. Kieran McGeary, as soon as Brian Fenton played the ball off, he obstructed the run. Conor Lane was right on and pulled it back for the free. You can see it there at the bottom Blated. of the screen. A very easy decision for Conor Lane. So his day is finished here, and coming on is Harry Lochran. Real chase for possession, Paul Mannion. Oh, picks it up brilliantly, fleet-footed, beats two men to it. Crisply delivered, beautifully over the bar. So stylish. What a player this lad is. Brilliantly done. Wonderful finishers. So good. Cora Campsey is the noted man-marker. Detailed to keep players quiet, but today Paul Mannion has been exceptional. This time it's Colin Kavanagh trying to win it. Johnny Cooper was dashing in to try and get it. In the end, it's picked up here by Frank Burns. All the way forward as far as Cahill McShane. Burns wants it back. McShane fancies it himself. It comes off an upright and went over the bar. And to their credit, Tyrone are fighting hard, trying to keep the scoreboard ticking over. And a very good point, his second point for Colin McShane. Those two goals still separating the teams on the scoreboard. Two vital goals in the first half, one from a penalty and one from Niall Scully as well. Harry Lochran, the one who comes in now to replace the player who's just got the black card, number 12, Kieran McGeary. And Toronto made two chances. See Niall Sludden going off earlier, he scored 3.13 in the championship, and Conor McAllister, the road at 2.38 he has scored, so both of the top scorers have now left the pitch. Philly McMahon. Down here as far as Johnny Cooper. Challenged by Hart. Hart goes again. This time it's McShane who stands his ground, carries it out with determination and spirit. Free kick quickly taken to Harry Lochran. He's got a couple of goals in this year's championship, vital goals. How they could do it, one of those today. Up here to Bradley. Two men going out to him. Holds up the play, however. Gives it in here to Richie Donnelly, who's just come on. And Donnelly hits it with the outside of the boot and misses badly. It was set up perfectly for him. 
that man Mark Bradley is doing particularly well inside if they can get ball into him. He's a very good option, but their shooting again has let them down today. Johnny Cooper in trouble. They've had a number of players now requiring attention during the course of this match so far. Very physical. A lot of good football, however, being played as well. His team, 27 championship matches unbeaten, remember. Big task for Mickey Hardy. He was saying beforehand, he describes the challenge of beating Dublin as a daunting one. Cooper OK. It'll take a more than a knock, I would imagine, to keep Johnny Cooper out of this final. He just relishes the challenge. Referee going in and having a, a word or two there. Speaking to Mark Bradley. Play continues, no cards. Kick out for Dublin. Stephen Truxton about to take it, playing in his sixth final. 17th year, playing in goal for Dublin. Out to Marchin, his very first season. To Philly McMahon. And the Dublin choir in the stands and the crowd of 82,000 in full voice at this stage, cheering on John Small, who holds on. And there's a free man ahead of him, and it's Niall Scully, and he's well picked out. And the passes are precise. It's down to Rock. Transferred back in here to Kilkenny again. Once more, they will patiently work it around. McMahon wanted it, didn't get it. McCaffrey instead. Scully threading it over to Mick Fitzsimons to come on to. About to begin final year medical studies. Here's Brian Howard. Back again here to Con O'Callaghan. Hasn't had much rest over the last 12 months with the hurling with Kula before all this, before coming back into the football with Dublin. Still only 22 years of age. Now trying to manage the game. Johnny Cooper. Absolute frustration now for Tyrone because he just can't get the football. The Dublin are working hard just to move around, support one another. There are always options. And it's Scully again. I think third time he's been involved in this particular holding exercise. Back from Fenton. And now they can raid. And it's McCaffrey. Takes a lot to stop him. Scully. Little change of direction on the part of O'Callaghan. Scully again. Kilkenny. They've held the ball now for over a minute. Fenton. Can he finish off? He certainly can. His second of the day. Scoring in his fourth All-Ireland final in a row. Brian Fenton, the man who has never been on a losing Dublin championship team, makes it 2-12 to 11 points. And what a score by Brian Fenton. Running this Tyrone team ragged. The possession held really well. And a brilliant finish there by Brian Fenton, and that's the one thing about this Dublin team, now they can introduce the finishers. And when Cormac Costello comes on, it doesn't get any easier for Tyrone, that's for sure. They held on to that one, Colm Cavanagh. Hamsey, former underage boxing star in Ulster. Getting this one forward, Richie Donnelly giving it back to Hart, they, could need, a, they need a goal, can he get it? Hart trying to break through here, and it's McShane, and McShane puts it wide after all that. Oh, the difference between the teams. Dublin, cohesive, lovely finishing. Tyrone working hard, dreadful stuff at the end, and a 12th wide. And Peter Hart obviously identified it was an opportunity to get a goal. Held on to it too long, and the chance was wasted. Here's Costello, first chance. He's third highest scorer, by the way, and he can't get in the starting 15. They're impossible to stop. Oh, the goalkeeper did well out for a 45. Niall Morgan denying Cormac Costello. Well, how about that for a way to announce your arrival in the 2018 final? Yeah, so direct. He's such a direct running style. It's his game. Comes on when players are tired. Just off the bottom of the post. Great save by Niall Morgan. Well, one goal and 31 points he scored already, the 24-year-old uh, from Whitehall, Cullum Kills. And today, if Dublin win, Cormac Costello will be picking up his fourth All-Ireland medal. I think it's the great Dublin team, or the, the great Kerry team, I should say, back in the 70s and 80s, and we hear a fellas getting six, seven, and eight, like that, All-Ireland medals. And here we have some of these players here. Dean Rock about to win his fifth of it. Holds good for Dublin. 
some team. Brian Fenton, 25. Niles Scully, 24. Con is 22. Brian Howard this year is 21. And that's what Jim Gavin has done. He's introduced a new talent all the time. Dean Rock scored all his points in the first half. Five, three from play. That's his sixth. It's going very nicely for the Dubs. 2.13 to 11. They are leading ahead by eight. And just on that turn. Said Bernard Brogan didn't make the 26 man squad today. It just gives you an idea of the strength and depth. He did an awful lot of work to try to get back in. He came on as a blood sub in the Roscama match. But there's no sentiment, Jim Gavin. He didn't make the squad today. And that just gives you an indication of how ruthless as a manager he is. Well, it's utterly professional for amateur players, but uh, doing the right thing as he sees it. I mean, which player would you have left out? That's Jack McCaffrey. Kilkenny is going to take the free kick. Con O'Callaghan, last year's big star, has a score today. Brian Howard has. We'd love another one. Almost going astray there. Michael McKernan chasing after him. Thankless task. They need to get the ball back. They need a bit of energy, but instead it's Dublin who are coming forward again, relentless and ruthless in their approach. McKernan, and then eventually it breaks loose. To 40 Hampsey, he's dragged back free to Tyrone. A moment's respite, chance for them to get the ball forward. We're going to see Kevin McMenamin coming in in a minute. <laughs> Not what you need if you're a Tyrone defender. They're just looking a little bit tired right now, this Tyrone team. And as Dublin introduced the subs, could get messy for them. The cavalry arriving. Frank Burns. Here's Mark Bradley again. Taking on his man, who is Owen Merchant. Merchant staying with him, but he's lost him. I think Merchant has got a leg injury. He limped away after all of that. Didn't look 100% by any means. Maddie Donnelly. There's no way through. Not immediately obvious anyway. A couple of runs being made. Conor Callaghan just stays with Matty Donnelly. Keeps him at bay. Then the challenges come in. Then it was... Fenton, finally it's away by James McCarthy and even the goalkeeper is coming forward it's going to be a, a line ball which is taken quickly, it's like they had only a couple of minutes left to play, they have still quite a bit, 13 minutes of the 70 remaining Richie Donnelly missed one earlier on when he was really in a very good position to throw on Colin Kavanagh right up to the full forward line. He's in on top of Philly McMahon, so maybe it's an option to go along. Got to kick it in, though, haven't you? Absolutely. Well, they're still hanging around the edges. Baldy Hamsey, surely now they have seen Colin Kavanagh in there. They're working it in, Hamsey. Steadying himself, and then he came across the legs of the uh, Dublin defender. And down he went, free in. Questions there, but Michael Fitzsimons. Yeah, when I think of the Dublin team today, every player has done something they played exceptionally well throughout the pitch. That's the one thing coming into a final you'd ask for your players. On the other hand, Tyrone be disappointed with some of their players didn't perform to the level required. There's uh, Paul Mannion going off, Kevin McManaman coming on, and also Darren Daly is uh, coming into the match in place of Owen Merchant. I mentioned that he had. An obvious injury. Yeah, another outstanding performance by Owen Merchant again. There's a man picking up a lot of Alarna medals, coming in and off the bench. Hasn't started too many games for Dublin, but an another player that Jim Gavin goes to. He's about to win his sixth. <laughs> it's not bad. Owen Merchant about to win one as well, but uh, he will have to see out the rest of the match from the substitutes bench. Free kick which Lee Brennan is preparing to take. Scored with his first. This should be routine because the first one was a good 40 something metres out. Two from two. Keeps the scoreboard ticking over. 213 to 12. So as you were at half time, a seven point game. Just not enough pressure on Stephen Cluxton kick out. He's getting them all away. He had two bad kickouts early on the game, but other than that, he's been flawless. Moving forward menacingly now is Mick Fitzsimons. Ooh, that was a difficult one to contain. And 
I'm not sure how Kieran Kilkenny will thank Fitzsimons for that, but he held on to it before being fouled anyway. O'Callaghan sharply back here as far as Darren Daly. Very solid, assured defender. Jack McCaffrey, Pacey. And this is Kevin McMenamin, who could be so explosive near to goal. Everyone remembers that goal back in the 2011 final. McCaffrey again. Ooh, missed that time by Dean Rock. Touched away from Ronan McNamee and retained. They've been absolutely masterful at times during this game. In fact, most of the time. Rory Brennan, that time uh, at Benamon, team to have committed the offence. He's saying my jersey was being pulled, the referee didn't agree. Peter Hart. His team seven behind. I mentioned already Colin Cavan is standing in the full forward line, but James McCarthy has gone back to Markham. Obviously better suited than Philly McMahon in the height department. Well, he's not going to get the ball. Richie Donnelly looked up but didn't give it in. And in the end, Jack McCaffrey came, stole it. There was a foul. And that again is just symptomatic of what's going wrong for Tyrone in the second half. And Jack McCaffrey's having an excellent match. Brilliant season, but today he's been raining down the wings throughout the day, setting up attack after attack. We thought they were in a bit of difficulty in the opening 20 minutes, but look at them now, flying. And here comes that man, Kevin McMenamin, trying to escape the clutches of three Tyrone defenders. He's won a free kick for Dublin, and that will do. Tough task for Declan McClure and the rest. McClure's dad, Harry uh, McClure, played in the 1986 All-Ireland Final for Tyrone against Kerry. And that was uh, the challenge by Paddy Hamsey there. A tough tackle on Johnny Cooper, but he's tough, he's physical. But there's just no stopping Kevin McMahon when he gets the ball. He's just so direct. He's pretty much unstoppable at this stage in the game. We're going to see Ronan O'Neill come in. He will be the sixth and final change made by the uh, Tyrone management. It's an awful shame we haven't seen him in a little bit earlier. I know he's one of those players that is so good in and around the goal area, the opposing goal area. The ball needs to be going in there and simply wasn't. Right now, the referee with some paperwork to do, Paulie Hamsey at the receiving end, and the referee explaining exactly why. And it should be another yellow card flashed in the direction of the Coal Island defender. Free to double. It's going to be taken by Dean Rock. Rock with six points so far. Alive, alive, oh, is the sound that you're hearing from all around the ground just as Ronan O'Neill comes in. Player who excelled here at minor level some years ago, and he comes in for Mark Bradley this time. Mark Bradley has scored twice, He's got two of the 12 points. Dean Rock looking for his seventh. No great pressure on him this time, like there was last year against Mayo. But he has to deal with it anyway in front of the hill. His seventh, 214 to 12 points. Dublin on the way with about seven minutes still to go of the 70. Two goals and 41 points now for Dean Rock. Such a consistent performer for Dublin. And he's all of that. Breaking away from his fullback position is Ronan McNamee. Challenged by Cooper. Going by Cooper, chipping it in. Looking for Ronan O'Neill, and that's not the ball to give him. Well, he hadn't a chance of getting that one, Ronan O'Neill. No, poor ball. And Stephen Cluxton's ready for the reset already. More change coming in. Eric Lowndes about to come in for Johnny Cooper. Uh, Johnny shipped an awful lot of heavy tackles there in the, throughout the match. It's such a tight, tenacious defender. I'd say Jim Gavin, one of the first names on the team sheet for Jim Gavin. Any team would love to have him, and here comes Eric Lowndes right now. Bear in mind... They are doing this today in the absence of Dermot Connolly, Bernard Brogan. We haven't seen Paul Flynn. We've seen Johnny Cooper, who's getting a huge ovation, deafening ovation. And Eric Lowndes comes on in his stead. Short kick out. And Dublin managed to just hold it here with Fitzsimons. Challenged strongly. He's going to go and have to win it back now from Peter Hart, and he fouls him. It's going to be a free in instead. Left for Ronan O'Neill. The referee says, "Go on, you're not going to steal a yard here." 
He hesitated for a second, and if you do that at this level, Peter Hart is in the top of him. Frank Burns. Picking it, an awkward angle, too awkward for Frank this time. He uh, has scored some very good points in this year's championship. Bear in mind, this is the 10th match that Tyrone have played. They had to play eight of those in 10 weeks. Yeah, and the story of the match really is Tyrone's misses. 13 wides today tells the tale of the game. Very much in a good position after 15 minutes, but just not efficient enough up front. Game last 70. Kilkenny. Players calling for it, everybody in... The Dublin ranks now looking so good, so fresh and so fit looking. That was Mac Benamon, but he was dispossessed by the hand of Harry Lochran. Nicely forward, switched out by Ronan O'Neill. Can they finish well? Paulie Hampsey looks direct. Oh, is there a penalty? There is a penalty. A penalty for Tyrone because Colm Kavanagh was upended and Philly McMahon is uh, saying, hang on, that wasn't... Uh, yeah. Wasn't the case. He looked like he was at sea, Philly there. High ball coming in. And you can see Philly McMahon. He pulls him back, and that's a definite penalty. This happened last year in the semi final, and it was the self same Philly who conceded the penalty then as well. Yeah, and we've been saying it a couple of minutes. Colin Cavanagh standing there. That's for fairness to Porrick Hampshire. That's the first good ball he has got. And now, now we have a penalty. And Peter Hart, who's already got two penalties in this year's championship. Scored against Carlo, scored against Roscommon from the spot. He'll be back here in two weeks' time when his fiancée, Anya Canavan, is here for the final of the Intermediates, and he scores! It breathes some new life into Tyrone's challenge, with four minutes of the 70 to go, plus whatever stoppage time the referee adds on. And there'll always be a few minutes stoppage time. I think right now they need to go Rue 1, Colin Kavanagh's in there. Dublin don't have a man with the height to mark him. We've seen throughout the year, the likes of Tony Kingston against Leash did very well with a high ball kicked in. Michael Darrell McCauley's come on, he's the last of the subs. He replaces Dean Rock. Timely reminder to Dublin not to take anything for granted, even when you have a handsome lead. It's down to five points right now. Three minutes to go, but you never know how many minutes the referee may add on. The last time... Connor Lane was refereeing an All-Ireland final here. I think he added on seven, seven or eight minutes. Stephen Cluxton out this time to Darren Daly. Put under pressure, fierce pressure. Yeah, and that's the second time that's happened. Declan McClure came in with a challenge. McClure racing back to get the football now. They realise they have just half a chance. Peter Hart back from Burns, Hart trying to measure it, inside towards Kavanagh again, dropped inside but regained by Richie Donnelly tried to get by final kick is a wayward one, a bad miss but that was a really good opportunity to put that one over by Lee Brennan hit it with the right, not his best another high ball in there, well won by Richard Donnelly, laid it out a good opportunity wasted well Dublin now will try and become this match and try and take the ball downfield, keep it away from Tyrone hands, maybe try and get the next score. Down to Costello, ready to take on Rory Brennan. Costello, such pace, going in towards a blind alley here, here however, still in play, plays it back, and that shot has gone, it's still in play, it was going left anyway away from the boot of Niall Morgan down to Peter Hart Tyrone hoping there may be sufficient time still two men against him Jack McCaffrey one of them putting in the hand to try and dispossess helped out by Brian Howard and the referee gives the free kick to Tyrone and he's lucky to get it he was going nowhere Jack McCaffrey done extremely well put the pressure on and Conor Lane decided it was a free 15 wides by his team against just six and none in the second half by Dublin. That's the tail. This is Ronan O'Neill. Back to Hampsey. O'Neill again, little block on it. And it's taken under control well by Conal Callahan and played out to Michael Darrow McCauley for the dubs. And away they go. Tyrone were putting everything into that last attack. They're a little bit uh, wide and lacking 
support at the back right now. Vulnerable. Costello kicking. That moves in, but it's stopped on the goal line by Niall Morgan. We're in the 70th minute of the All-Ireland Football Final. Frank Burns back once again to Morgan. He's decided to heck with goalkeeping. A fancy being in the middle of the field. Up once again towards Colin Coward. A touch back down. Peter Hart has got a free kick and it's going to be a free in and an almost certain point for Tyrone. And there are going to be seven minutes of additional time. This final is not over yet. Yeah, it's obvious. Great ball in by Niall Morgan. That tactic is working well. A lot of messing going on right now up front. But Tyrone and Peter Hart need to be composed. Knock the ball over the bar and ask the question. John Small has been yellow carded already. A second one for him, a red. And once again, John Small gets sent off. It happened last year. And it happened to the Leinster final as well. He's abrasive. He plays on the edge. This time, he's got the yellow card. And that was the challenge that came in over the back of Peter Hart. So a red card and Dublin are down to 14. Yeah, an opportunity for Lee Brennan knock this over the bar. Plenty of time left. It's John Small that got the red card, by the way, not Philly McMahon. John Small. Lee Brennan kicking it over. His third. But more importantly now, with one minute of the uh, additional time played, it's a four-point game. And that man, Stephen Cluxon, to that man, Brian Fenton, at a crucial time in the game. Fenton moving forward, kicking it smartly down. Kevin McMenamin, again, Tyrone are open. The challenge about to come in, and he's finished splendidly. McMenamin kicks it over the bar. Always comes up trumps in an All-Ireland final, it appears. Two minutes into stoppage time, and once again, this is a five-point game with Dublin the leaders. Matty Donnelly has a score today. The Tyrone team captain trying to round Brian Fenton. He's got a chance, still going, chasing after McCaffrey, no slouch. Gives it back to Ronan O'Neill. Clipping it across here, that's an impossible one. Very, very difficult ball to give to Michael McKernan. Oh, what an option to take at that stage. Oh, poor, poor play by Ron O'Neill. There was men everywhere. There was an opportunity just to knock the ball over the bar. Regroup. 16 wides by Tyrone in this match. They've created a total of 29 opportunities against Dublin's 31. Yeah, and fair play to Tyrone. He's stuck at the task. Despite the fact of all them misses, very honest effort today. Cluxton to kick this one out. Another four and a half minutes left to play. Jack McCaffrey, challenged by Donnelly, keeps his composure. Fitzsimons. And the Dublin fans in this bumper crowd here, in full voice right now, trying to sing and to cheer their team home for the four in a row. Done by Wexford way back along. A hundred years ago, in fact. So what an achievement that would be. Done by Kerry twice. This time it's Conal Callaghan. Mick Fitzsimons then getting into some difficulty and vigorously challenged by Frank Burns, but the referee has blown his whistle yeah, that man Brian Fenton exceptional today Con O'Callaghan Kieran Kilkenny so many leaders in this Dublin team at such a young age to seem to get better well, there's so much left in this team you would feel Cormac Costello Rory Brennan trying to win the ball back that's gone out of play the time running away for Tyrone and Dublin getting a, a fair old challenge at times in the second half. Keen O'Sullivan having to watch on, nothing he can do about it. Michael McKernan knocking it across to his goalkeeper, Niall Morgan. They need another goal. Got about another three minutes. Frank Burns. 
Finally, Matty Donnelly saying, let's have a go, let's lock it in there, let's see what happens. And it travels all the way over the bar. Great point. He's probably knocked it into Colin Kavna with 60 yards out. Just knocks over the bar. Great score. There's still life there. 2.15 to 114. To their credit, Tyrone have uh, done their level best to make a real match of this up against one of the great teams. Michael Darrow McCauley scampering away down to Brian Fenton, the score of two points already in this match. Thomas Costello. Well, he hasn't scored since he came in. Into Kieran Kilkenny, his shorts being pulled back that time. And Kilkenny kicks, and the referee says that's okay. Put the flag up, and it's a third point for Kieran Kilkenny. No way was he going to be stopped. Two goals and 24 points, all from play. An incredible return for a forward of his quality. Maddie Donnelly. Well, people were saying this was going to be a blowout, like last year, 12 points between them. But we had a very spirited performance with a lot of very good football, with some great scores as well, some awful misses. And that's all part of the, the mix, I guess. Down here to Kevin McManaman, having scored once, tried to dart inside. They try to keep him outside. McCarden then putting in the challenge. Just about a minute still remaining of the seven indicated by the match referee. Tyrone looking weary and really down at this stage. Can't blame them. Five points behind. It's not going to happen for them. Play continues and... Ronan McNamee against the 14 Dubs who are out on the field still. Come on, you boys in blue, they are singing. And Declan McClure knocks it down towards Colin Kavanagh. And taking it brilliantly. Oh, superb by Brian Howard. He played under 21 as a centre half back. Plays everywhere and anywhere with the senior team. Brian Fenton now. Corma Costello, the Whitehall Cullen Kills man. Dublin about to win another. Michael Darrow McCauley taking it in past Hampsey and fisting it over the bar. Well, the record will show that he has scored in the All Ireland final as well, and it's all over. And Dublin once again reigns supreme. All Ireland champions for 2018 and winners of four in a row. What an achievement for Jim Gavin there and all of his backroom team. They are the third county and the fourth team to win four titles in succession. Unbeaten as well for 28 matches. Mickey Hart goes across, offers his wishes, his good wishes. So many star players out there for Dublin. Tyrone gave it their best shot, but defeated Mickey Hart's lot once again this time. Some performance by Dublin. It wasn't the game that we were anticipating. In fact, it was an awful lot better, Desi. Yeah, very enjoyable match, and what a team, this Dublin team. Four in a row, incredible. Just to give the final score, Dublin 217, Tyrone 114. But like, if the likes of Conor Callaghan, so young, 22 years of age, I thought Brown, Brian Howard was immense today. Brian Fenton in midfield, 25. This team are getting stronger as they go on. Jim Gavin is introducing new players all the time, like Owen Merkin, and this year's Brian Howard. But they're an incredible team, so well led by the likes of Kieran Kilkenny and Dean Rock up front. But Dublin can be proud all over the pitch. They had superstars today, and Jack McCaffrey as well, excellent. And there is the number 27. He didn't get on, of course, Bernard Brogan. And Jim Gavin goes across to every one of his players, even the man who was sent off there, John Small, on two yellow cards. And the youngster, Brian Howard from Rahini. The day belongs to the Dubs, superbly managed by Jim, superbly coached by his backroom team, and cheered to the rafters by these thousands and thousands of Dublin fans. But essentially, it's a day for the marvellous squad of players. They appreciate it, and I'm sure Tyrone fans as well appreciate what a good match it had turned out to be. It looked like going way away from their team, but uh, they came back strongly. Let's go down and get some comment. Let's uh, join Joanne Cantwell. James McCarthy, congratulations. Number four in a row.
Does it feel as sweet? Incredible, incredible, especially after a massive battle like that. Um, lost for words, especially. But it is for you, four in a row. So is there a difference in feeling when you've made history as opposed to the, the, the last time? It is, it, look, it is incredible. We'll sit down the next five or six days and we're just we're dwelling it, but um, we're just so happy, so happy. Is that what happens, that you're caught up in the moment, you don't get to, a chance to savour when you're making history? Like, I, I, we're such a tight group, we, we've been playing together for eight, nine years, ten years now, and we do everything together. We, we train hard together, we go socialise together, we're best friends, we go to weddings, we have everything, so just to, when all the work comes together for this, it's just special, you know? And yet, there are new players in that come in each year. Are they automatically a part of the family like that? Young lads like Brian Howard, Owen Murch are coming through and they just give you such a lift, you know, to give, you, to give the group a massive lift. They add so much to it, so it's just unbelievable. Well, go get your medal for the fourth time. Congratulations, James. Yeah, James McCarthy, very, very happy with himself. He's just won another All-Ireland. That's his sixth. His dad, by the way, John McCarthy, was a forward. He won three. There's Jim Roach, one of the officials going through the picture there. It's such a day for them. They delivered these Dublin players when they had to. All the hard work paying off for them. And right now, they will already be thinking, I'm sure, somewhere in Dublin of that never, to, never before achieved at senior level, the five in a row, the... The uh, search for five, I'm sure, will start almost immediately. 2019 is a different story, however. Tyrone will have gained much, I think, by making this year's decider. They started very well, Desi. Then those two goals really rocked them towards the end of the first half. But the penalty goal, had it come a bit earlier, maybe we might have had an even more dramatic finish. Yeah, I suppose one point in 20 minutes. Oh, what do you expect from a team like this? Pat Spillane will be a worried man up there, carried it four in a row, but this Dublin team now could be the greatest team ever to play football. They really are an exceptional bunch of players, and their age profile is so good as well that they'll be around for many more years. Well, that man's happy. A huge congratulations to Dublin on this special day in Gaelic football, a historic day. And just to remind you once again, only the third team ever to accomplish that four in a row. Desi mentioned, Pat, this achievement, and he reckons they could even go one better again than you. I think they could, Michael, I think they could. I think let's today salute a brilliant team, brilliant footballers, brilliant role models, an advertisement for You're everything right, that's good about the Gaelic football. Mm. And it's up to the other counties to aspire to being like the Dubs, playing like the Dubs. But let's, let's, let's applaud what they've achieved, four in a row. 28 championship games unbeaten. Three of those starting team today. Yes. Cluxton, Keno Sullivan, James McCarthy have played in all six. Eleven players have now won six All Ireland medals. Jim Gavin has managed Dublin to five All Ireland senior football titles. That's second only to Mick mm, They've mm, won six mm. All Ireland titles, Michael, in eight years. They are just brilliant and well done. Humble. Not, not to take away in any, any way from the achievements of the past, but because of the intensity of matches that is there in the modern game, it is more difficult now, perhaps, to win these all Ireland's than it was at any stage. Well, there's, there's, there's perhaps, no, not, there's it's, perhaps it's it's no doubt about it. I've only seen teams since the 60s, so, mm. like, you know, you can say the best team of all time. Yeah. The best team, if an evolving team, and, and Pat made the point at the start, that there's six different from now from a few years ago, so it's an evolving team, but I have never seen a team which the speed, the skill, the equality, the endurance, the humility, yep. the fact that they seem as if they uh, have, a, have a responsibility to the game to play it in the proper way, and it's great to watch Dublin in action yep. in any game because they kick past, they're running power, they have everything else. And also, like, unlike the Kerry team of the 70s, they've dominated the league as well. They dominate everything they play in, mm. and of course they have to play far more games in a season than, say, I, I, Kerry that's, that's had to point. do. I, I, the seven or eight games, whereas Kerry played maybe three or four. So they are the best I have seen, there's no doubt about it. But the worrying thing for every other team, and I looked at the ages of the Dublin they forward don't. line at the start, Dean Rock was the oldest at 28. I think nearly everybody else was under 25. Yeah. Like the likes of Brian Fenton, who was fantastic in the middle of the field. Johnny Cooper, who had a brilliant game today. Brian Howard, who was magnificent today. They're all very young. They could get better. Yeah. The big, well, 
you know, their 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 behaviour off the field as well, and their the, the way they are such brilliant team ambassadors. I mean, I'll just tell this story now. Um, James McCarthy, out of the blue, I got a text from him on Friday, and he said, Joe, you know, I hope you enjoy your big day on Sunday. It is well deserved. You know, looking forward to seeing you. I have fond memories of that team. These are classy guys who know something about the past of Dublin and the future, and they're there passing these jerseys on, and they play with great respect and dignity for the game. And, you know, you could not begrudge them their great success. And they're about to accept the Sam Maguire. GAA president and the Fianna club man, John Horan, presenting the Sam Maguire Cup to Dublin's captain, Stephen Cluxton, as Dublin retain their title yet again. All-Ireland winners for 2018. The partying in Dublin is set to begin. Celebrating another milestone in the life and times of the best Dublin team ever. The record speaks for itself. 28th All-Ireland win. What a scene, what a setting. Jason Sherlock there with the team manager, Jim Gavin, and all the backroom team, Declan Darcy as well, and, of course, Shane O'Hanlon. Dublin senior football team. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just thank the officers of the Coke Park for organising the, the competition. I'd like to congratulate her own on a fine game today. It was nip and tuck. I know you've put a lot, a lot of effort into this, and, and we did too, and you put, it, put us to the pin of our collar, and I would just like to thank you uh, on behalf of everybody here for the spectacle that we had today. Thanks a minute. I'd like to thank AIG for our sponsorship of the Dublin GAA and to our other partners who support. Uh, we really, really cherish. To the officers of the County Board and the staff in Park Par Parnell, we'd like to thank you for your endless work, your dedication to the team. And regardless of what people say about money and population, put these teams out and really, really go as hard as we can. Jim, the management team and the backroom team. I'll try not, I won't be listing off people because I know I'll always forget someone. But uh, thank you for your endless dedication to this journey. 50 weeks from last time here to get to here today. So you guys deserve a massive round of applause. To the players themselves, there's probably not much I could say because I would undervalue these guys because the work and dedication that they put in year after year is unbelievable. Their de determination, their self-sacrifice, their commitment to their county, that's what led you to this All-Ireland. Take a bow, boys. Congratulations. To our families, I'd like to thank you for your unrelenting support, encouragement and loyalty throughout the year. You guys are the ones that probably do the sacrifices. We enjoy the sport, so thank you so much to our families. <laughs> to our supporters. You've travelled in numbers everywhere, from O'Brien Cup to League to Leinster to All-Ireland. Your unwavering support gets us through the tough times, especially in the last five or ten minutes of a game when it just isn't going right for us. Thank you guys so much. So there you go, and it's uh, a joyous moment for Philly McMahon and all the rest after Stephen Cluxton's words there, which were greeted with great cheers, as you heard. The Sam Maguire is set to stay in the capital for one more year at the very least, and as the late Paddy O'Shea used to tell me, it'll shorten the winter. There's young Brian Howard. What an addition he has been, not to mention Con O'Callaghan. And it's good to see that Kean O'Sullivan is able to go and pick up that trophy as well and raise it to the skies, having had to go off with his injury. 
John Small from Ballymont Kickhams, that's a good representation there. Paddy Andrews, of course, and Michael Fitzsimons. And the big midfielder, Brian Fenton, next. Big cheer for Brian Fenton, whose family are steeped in sport. His late mother, Marion, was a great uh, swimming coach. Sadly missed. But uh, Brian, but Jim Gavin and all the rest going around and just celebrating right now. The youngsters coming in as well, Darren Daly coming in with children there. They'll always remember this, I'm sure, the day when they were able to come and share with the big fellows, with the adults. Cormac Costello and another little man here. Cormac, only 24 years of age. And off he goes, and that little lad, I'm sure, is having quite a day at Croke Park. They all are in the blue and the navy of Dublin. They have been fantastic champions, as the panel have been saying. They've played the game in such a wonderful style, wonderful spirit. Everybody loves coming to watch them. And uh, as they go through now, everybody gets a chance to have their moment with the Sam Maguire. Michael Darrow McCauley, the last one there we've got to look at. Uh, Michael, it's Sunday for the Dubs. I hope you're enjoying your big day as well with the three lads up in the studio. Indeed, and enjoying these celebrations. And a special day as well, Colm, obviously for Stephen Cluxton that we heard from a moment ago there because, of course, he is this special captain in the history of the GA. Absolutely, and I've said it before, he revolutionised Gaelic yes. football with the way that he has uh, been able to yes. take the kickouts. Everybody else yeah. has copied him. He's the revolutionary, the Che Guevara in a way of Gaelic football. And he has brought one element to it, and I think it's no coincidence too that uh, the modesty of the players, it's a reflection of Jim Gavin. His parents are from West Clare, they're steeped in That's Irish right. culture and Irish tradition and Irish music, and he has those values, and it's very obvious that those values have been transmitted to his team. So, they're just an incredible bunch in every way, but if somebody says to me in 10 or 20 or 50 years there's only going to be one Dublin team, I'd say, well, they'll have won every All-Ireland and most of them in the meantime. Can and let's hear from Dublin's Paul Mannion, he is with Joanne. Paul, what a game, what a season it's been for you. Has that been one of the best of <laughs> quite a few good seasons? Yeah, the last couple of years have been incredible. It's just so good to finish it. Winning the time again, it's an unbelievable feeling. That's what we, we came here to do, we're just over the moon. If you look back at the game, a bit of a dodgy start, but then you just came roaring into it with that penalty. Yeah, we were backs against the wall there. They, they really put it up to us in those first 20 minutes. And, we got a lucky break with the penalty there and just, just glad I could, uh, took it away. So, yeah, I suppose that was probably gave us a boost. The same as the rest of the lads. We kind of woke up a bit and strung together a few points. And um, luckily from, from there, we, we kind of took control of the game and made it difficult for them. You did more than took it away. Have you been practicing quite a bit in those? Well, yeah, I missed one down there in the, the Leinster final. So, um, yeah, I, I went away and practiced them a lot. And, yeah, just, just made sure I, I struck a property this time and glad to see it go to the back of the net. There were a few shaky moments. You looked like you were completely in control and then there were a few shaky moments towards the end and, of course, John Small's red card as well. Yeah, I think we probably just got a bit too um, relaxed there with about 10 minutes to go and we, we knew Toronto were going to press up on us like they did in, in those last kind of 20, 20 minutes of OMA and um, maybe we weren't focused properly for that or something. They, they got a couple of dangerous high balls in and got the penalty off that, so yeah, we had to, to stay focused right until the end. So. And as, as always, you did, and once again, All Ireland champions. Well done, what a great year! Well done, well done. Thanks, very much. Cheers. Thanks, Joanne. All right, on that note, we have another break coming up here on the programme. Back with more on this 2018 All Ireland football final right after that. better when you've all the facts. Sixty-six games, four months of endeavour, and at the end of it all, Dublin have reached their goal. It's a four in a row triumph, joining only Kerry and Wexford in reaching that milestone. What an incredible achievement that, that was. 
Let's go down pitch side and join Joanne Cantwell. And here with me are two more All-Ireland winners, Thrones' own Mulligan and Sinead Goldrick, who has uh, an All-Ireland final herself coming up in a couple of weeks' time. We'll talk about this one, first of all. Were you ever in any doubt? Um, I just think, I suppose, for the first 10 minutes, Tyrone came out, but they didn't get the scores on. And then I think Paul Mannion's Penno, and then he went straight back and stopped a goal. I think that was a really turning point, and Dublin just kept their work right up. Like, Conor Callaghan was outstanding, Jack McCaffrey, there's so many Dublin players that stood up today, and um, it was a really good team performance overall by Dublin. From a Tyrone point of view, where in particular do you think it went wrong? I think shot selection uh, was a big uh, fact in the match. Um, forwards hitting outside of the boots when the shot wasn't really on. I think we got off to a dream start. First 15 minutes we were coasting, we were in Dublin's faces, and it was it was perfect. And then a bad sele uh, shot selection from McShane, went up in the field, scored a point, bad kick out from Morgan, then the penalty, which I probably don't think it was a penalty, but it's over, game's over at that stage. It's amazing though, isn't it, how this Dublin team can take advantage of, even when they're under the cosh, and then all of a sudden, one turning point like that, and they make sure that they put the foot down in the throat. Yeah, yeah, and even I think like Keno Sullivan came off, uh, Johnny Cooper came off, Owen Merchant came up, so that's three backs coming off, and it shows the calibre that they have in the backs, that people just come on and gaps didn't slip, so just overall, everyone I think is always talking about the forward line and the subs coming on, I think the backs that came on today, you know, really kind of stood up, and it was just really good to see that you can, like, they're just anyone is replaceable there. The team is just full of like outstanding players. But did you actually think at that stage when those players were going off, and that's when Tyrone started to creep back in, and just before John Small got sent off? It. I didn't feel that Dublin were being pushed, pushed, pushed the way we should have. The last ten minutes, the Tyrone reverted to Plan B, was put Calvin into full forward. I thought that was working. Yeah. I thought they should have did that a wee bit sooner. Do you know what I mean? And they were getting joy from it. Calvin got the penalty. Cluxton flapped it a few so maybe they should have reverted that 15 minutes to, to go from the end of time but at, you know I said our, our, the shot selection was very poor and the forwards kind of let us down on the day Given that you do believe that, that they have this great squad do you see them getting even better? We saw them pick up another couple of players this year can we see that happening again? I think the strength in numbers and what Jim Gavin is doing you know Eric Lyons came on today you know in an All-Ireland final you probably haven't seen him as much throughout the championship and I think that, yeah, when what you were saying about when Kavanaugh was in, he was in like full forward for a while, they maybe didn't yeah. use him, they should have used him sooner. Yeah. And they got a penalty from it. But then the second time they did it, Brian Harry got an outstanding catch and then that just stopped it. So I think it just really shows that like, whatever player it is, they can kind of stand up and make a really good... Dublin Dub Dublin seemed to adapt to whatever thrown through at them. And yeah. that, was, that was the difference. You know, Collie was in there for you know, say 10 minutes, then as you say, a brilliant catch, but he didn't get the penalty. But whatever other teams throw at Dublin, that's when Dublin come, in their be uh, come better. It seems to be man motivated, it seems to be man, you know, on the pitch. Jim, or Gavin doesn't have to come and make these decisions, yeah. the men make it themselves, and that's what makes them a special team. Before we go, one very quick word. Yeah. Is it really important it's a double and that the Dublin women beat Cork in an All-Ireland final? Yeah, I just think looking in the Crow Park today and you see the crowds coming in, it's an All-Ireland final day. It's a brilliant like day for everyone and the ladies have that in two weeks' time, the Camogie have that next week. So it's just for fam family and any supporters watching the game today. You know, there's Camogie next week, there's ladies getting football and it's going to be, you know, the skill level is going to be high. So we just would like to have a huge crowd out here um, and, you know, Dublin are playing Cork and there's a lot of history there. So it's just going to be hopefully a good day, you know, for, for the game. Nate Goldrick, Owen Mulgan, thank you very much. It is the Camogie Finals live on RT next week and it's Cork against Dublin in the All-Ireland Football Final the following week. It is indeed, but for the moment it is the Football Final. And Mugsy mentioned a thing there, Joe, that you want to pick up on. He was yeah. talking about Tyrone's shot selection. Yeah, I think it's more not just shot selection. We mm. identified this in the Monaghan game. Tyrone, the big managerial error of Mickey Hart, and there have been many, was that last year after the semi-final against Dublin, he should have converted to football yeah. then and worked on football because we saw today that a huge problem for Tyrone was that they did create a lot of potential chances, but they didn't know how to take advantage of them. Poor shot selection, the wrong pass. In the second half, they wouldn't kick past the ball forward. And this is what comes from playing conditioned zonal defensive football for four or five years. Players aren't trusted. And if you don't trust the players, they won't trust each other. Whereas Dublin were moving the ball, they were taking on every opportunity and moving the ball because they're trusted on the field. And you wind back to the Tyrone team of 03, 05, 08, they would have taken those chances 
They would have created those opportunities. They play the game as they see it. Toronto are going the right direction, make no mistake yes. about it. And let us hope that we're now starting to, going to come out of this morass of dross, this defensive football that, is, that has been dragging the game into the mire. Because, I mean, Tyrone come out of this today and they say, hey, look, look at the many chances we've missed. Yeah. These guys aren't superhuman. We can go out and at compete. This, yeah. They are a great team, no yeah. doubt. But one of the advantages that they've had is save for me, oh, everyone else has disappeared down the blanket defensive hole. And Dublin have just made hay over the last three, four years against blanket defensive teams. Do you agree with them, guys? Teams. Yeah. Uh, well, I do, yes, to, to, to a certain point, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Tyrone's game plan is based on counter-attacking. It's, it's based primarily on getting the defences right. It's a counter-attacking game. The two elements that are missing is, A, the kick, their kicking game. Yeah. They don't have a kicking game. And you, it was only, as Muggsy alluded to there, when they reverted to plan B for the last 15 minutes, where they kicked the ball into the danger area, where they had Colin Kavanagh, big target manager, and they caused problems to the mm, dubs. Mm. I, but at the end of the day, look, let's be honest, Six points. They were never winning the game. They were never going to win the yes. game. This game was over as a contest long before halftime. Dublin played the second half on their terms, and if they wanted it, they could have won by 10 or 15 points. Well, so look, credit for Tyrone for keeping it going, putting it up. They didn't, their heads never dropped, but look, they were a distant second to the Dublin there's, there's a big, There's a big difference in class here, and the other side yeah. of this is yeah. the big Tyrone players who needed to overpower their opponents, like didn't. Matty Donnelly and Niles Sludden and Peter Hart and Colin Kavanagh and uh, Kieran McCann. Like, they were all second best to Brian yes, Howard, yeah. Kieran Kilkenny, Brian Fenton, Con O'Callaghan, Johnny Cooper. Like, the class players were on the Dublin side. So, mm. whatever tactics were in it, and I think Tyrone tactics are flawed, and yes. it's been a dreadfully boring year because of that. All right, well, the lads uh, are here with us at Croke Park for another while, and we will be hearing more from them shortly. But right now, though, we are going to give you another chance to enter our Sunday game competition. We've teamed up with O'Neill's Sports, who are celebrating 100 years, by giving you the chance to win an amazing dream holiday for you and your family to anywhere in the world. Whether you take a trip down under, soak up the sun in the Caribbean, road trip across the USA, or see the far-off sites of South America, Africa or Asia, the choice is all yours. You'll enjoy a luxury holiday to the value of €5,000, plus O'Neill's Sports will also give you €3,000 spending money to make it the trip of a lifetime. For your chance to win, answer this. Which of these is a well-known terrace in Croke Park? Is it Hill 10, Hill 16 or Hill 20? To enter, call 15 17 71 71 82 or text the word GAME followed by your answer and name to 57001. Calls from the Air Network will cost €2.03. Euro Calls from other networks may be higher. Viewers in the North can also text to 57001 or call the number on screen. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at midday on Monday, September 10th. Full details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed. Super Valley will donate 2.6 million euro to GAA clubs. Proud sponsor of the Senior Football Championship. The celebrations continue around Croke Park. The 2018 Football Champions have been crowned and it is of course Dublin who have taken that honour, beating Tyrone on a scoreline of two goals and 17 points to one goal and 14 points. Joe Bradley, Colin Rourke was saying to me during the second half, watch Dublin when they had possession of the ball, watch yeah. Dublin here now, yeah. they put it together 150 passes yeah. and then yeah. get a point at the end of it. And that's exactly what Tyrone's was Tyrone's big problem was the lack of composure, the lack of attacking chemistry, a charge that cannot be levelled at Dublin, who've played beautiful yeah. football for six years now. And this selection that we're looking at, they're now six points up and they hold possession for a minute and 47 seconds. Now, not, it's not easy to mm. do that. You could become jittery, the crowd gets on your back, their movement, they're probing, at all times their heads are up. Look at the man inside at that point. He just decides it's a bit risky to take that pass on. But because everybody's passing and moving, they've got such a beautiful chemistry built up. They end with a score. That's terribly demoralising for Tyrone. And it was saying to them, look, no matter what you do, we will keep you at arm's length. But I suppose the other side of it is, lads, that the gap here at the end was six points. And those six points essentially came, if you like, 
in the first half and the two goals that Dublin got. Yeah, it was a sort of a blitzkrieg when it looked as if we were going to have our proper match and we were all looking and thinking maybe this is going to be Tyrone's day. One bad kick out changes the whole tone of the game. Mannion in. At the time, I didn't know whether it was a penalty or not. I thought the referee... Tiana McCann took him out. I don't think he did take him out. I Even in your area, that was, was penalty. That's, a, that's Tiana McCann taking out but Paul Mannion. Yeah. Clearly. But once, but yes. once Clearly. that penalty went into the net and it was clinical precision, it was really a message that the sort of day of the Boy Scouts was over, the big league, Dublin then really into stride, scored 2-6 to a point for the remainder of the half. And the game was over. And the second half was really, really punching time. Sally, can I, can I interject just one thing? Um, Michael Lester, after 35 years presenting the Sunday game, the 77th All-Ireland Senior Footballer Hurling Final to present, <laughs> and it's your last programme. And as a panel, we are sad and disappointed. You'll probably have different words. We are sad and disappointed. This, is, this will be the last day. Us as a panel will work together with you, Michael. Um, for, normally, we're analysing managers, tactics, teams, individuals. Today, perhaps, Maybe we should analyse Michael's performances over the last couple of years. So let's roll the VT there. I never trusted any of you, by the way. <laughs> I remember one day being in the radio sport department out in RTE. I saw a young man enter. I didn't know him. Somebody said he's from Galway. I had a look, a perfect specimen of the West Awake. KV Owen, Michael Lester, glowing with enthusiasm. Sinead the Heel, Slant a coot of his cowyer, a gus dal of Godona Rawyer. Hello and welcome. In the programme tonight, it's the All Ireland Football Finals. Tonight, we'll be taking a trip down memory lane. And how did anybody go and sit and have a pint with those boys after that? It's an absolute outrage, right, and it's fine. totally the opposite made, of what Joe, sports should be. Major point. You've made your point. We got a health cannibal and BA to find this goose. We went to the pub for a quick pint. Ordinary, decent citizens. Fitting people up with drink. Bringing them out in the street and then asking them... <laughs> these silly questions. Beautiful eyes, Michael. I love them. That's right, right, right. I need you. I can't get into my goose. I don't know. Good morning. I hope you're all well this morning. I'm Moya Doherty. And I'm Michael Lester. A very good morning to you. Well, it was a busy morning for our Irish boxers. In the early hours, Wayne McCullough made his debut in the ring. Stephen Roach, Sean Kelly, and right here beside me, Stevie Jockin, Jockin the Pocket Rockets. Yes, it's party time, folks. And if that sounds a little bit premature, well, I don't really care. The first time I heard Starmer, I was cutting turf in the bog in Clune the Hamper. Great moments, great memories indeed. Can I, just, sorry, can I just say, I, uh, if you ask my honest opinion, that is the worst piece of analysis you guys have ever done. And we you've done some bad ones. ones. We haven't started this well, yet. I, I think I spent the longest time with you, Michael, and I'd just like to say thank you for your courtesy, your civility, and your professionalism, because you never wanted to be the story. You let us get on with it. And you were just fantastic. Yeah. Well, well you better, and you Michael, better, you, here, hold on, hold on, you better not be going to Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Ma Michael, I, Sorry, I, I, <laughs> I think I'm here just as long as Colin, but I want to thank you personally for being so professional, so kind to us, so understanding, putting up with, with all these prima donnas here. Yes, yes. Uh, you've made the Sunday game the institution that it has been. So now, you know, when I'm thinking about it, uh, from a lesser TV programme, there's three guys already after throwing their hat for a nomination for president. So, Michael, 
So your hat in for nomination for president, we'll back you. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. That's a very kind offer to actually go for Oris and Oakdron. But the one thing I have to tell you lads is when I'm stepping down, I did suggest for tea that to get rid of the three of you was going to be going to just have a change. Oh, <laughs> we heard that from Declan McBennett. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, lads. You're very kind. Thank you very much indeed for that. Let's, look, let's just wrap up on this football final. Or if you like, very quickly on this football championship that we've seen in 2018. Good, well, bad and different? I think it has suffered badly in comparison with the hurling, but the hurling has been just fantastic. Yeah. But what we're seeing in Gaelic football now is the game has become unwatchable unless Dublin are involved. And this has been reflected in the trend of people going to games. The attendances at the semi-final were down for the first time ever. Mm. I think the television mm. audiences are suffering as well. So I think there needs to be root and branch reform of the game going forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, look, it's been a disappointing football championship, but at the end of the day, look, the cream always comes to the top uh, and that has come with Dublin who are um, brilliant ambassadors yeah. for the game but I agree with Colm we will need to address the ills of Gaelic football but, but this yeah. is a year Pat when, when the GA introduced the Super 8s for example Yeah, I can see a future for this I can see this going forward would you agree or I th Michael, what, what needs to be, there needs to be a change in the mindset of coaching of Gaelic football. And too often in the recent past, the mindset has been uh, defensive, possession, conservative, KG, safety force. And unfortunately, in the coaching of Gaelic football at club and inter-county level, there's a lot of bluffers and spoofers have taken over. Yeah, Dublin, I mean, look, obviously Dublin thrill us all. Yes. And the way they play yes. the game continues to inspire us. It's been a source of amazement to me that rather than coaches copy the Dublin template, They've copied the Jimmy McGuinness yeah, template. Yeah. But it is coming to an end. Tyrone abandoning it for the semi-final, I think, has signalled the death knell for it. And we also are conscious of the fact that GA is more than just a game. You know, it's, we, we all owe a duty to the game. It's bigger than you or me. It's even, you know, like games is even bigger than Pat Spillane. Jeez. But we all, we all owe <laughs> the, the game a duty. And if anything comes out of this game today, it's that Tyrone need to be applauded yep. for coming out and playing with courage. They just haven't been doing it for long yeah. enough. There is nothing to fear from going out and playing Gaelic nope. football and expressing yourself. And if we have a situation where, where Gaelic football is more like the minor final yeah. than mm -hmm. like most of the football we saw this year, and we see other teams trying to play it. Yeah. Kerry, Mayo, Kildare yeah. play great football. When they're, when they're involved in games, you get entertainment. Yeah. That is the way the game must be played now. Right. We've had an aberration for four years. Hopefully it becomes a nightmare that, that we forget about within a year or two. Well, I'll tell you, for the moment, I let you guys sort out the, the yeah. future of Gaelic <laughs> football. But thank you very much. OK, it is on that note time for us to leave you this evening from Croke Park. But I hope that you will be able to join Des Cahill and myself for the later edition of the Sunday game as we reflect further on today's final and we will also be naming our team of the year in football. 9.30 here on RTE2. But for the moment, from Colin, Pat, Joe and myself, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>